it's gone sideways. Cool. All right. Well, let's get started. So, uh, Wayne Cleveland, thank you very much for coming on. Yeah, mate. Always a pleasure. <laughs> thank so, you, mate. So, mate, when I uh, when I called you what last week just to uh, just to talk to you about this show and also to lock you in, I thought it'd be like a quick four or five minute phone call, <laughs> and then and then we ended up talking for about forty minutes on the phone. Oh, I noticed and I that. was like, I was like, fuck, this guy is, can talk the ears off an elephant. Um, <laughs> well, my, my missus says you t- talk to. Uh, 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 what is it? The leg off a chair. <laughs> That's what you said, mate. Yeah. You, you know, mouth full yeah. of marbles underwater, you're still going. Um, but it was a good side because I was like, all right, this is going to be great when you come on. But also, um, I think it. We were we talked so long because, um, you know, we had we had some some similarities in in our stories and also just um, I think our, our our viewpoint on on life a bit on on where we're at now. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So that's why I was very excited about having you on. So um, you know, let's let's go through it. From let's go through the, <laughs> the adventure of Wayne. Ha. So you uh, you grew up in Maroubra. Yep. Right in housing commission. <coughs> yep. Yeah. What was that like? Um. I mean, it was look, it wasn't too bad. It is what it is. Was it? I didn't really know anything different, did I? Yeah. You know so, what I mean? So, so it wasn't like I was a rich kid and then went to the houses. I kind of just grew up. What was your family? Did you have – was your mum and, and dad there or uh, – So my mum and her partner. Yep. They, 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 they – obviously I grew up with my mum. Yep. And my Siblings? Real, uh, siblings, yes. I have – okay, so on dad's side I have four boys. There's four of us. Yep. Then on mum's side with her her partner, uh, we I had one brother. Yep. So all together, so, there's like five of us. And so who did you in the house in Maroubra? Who did you grow up with? Uh, my my brother on my mum's side. Yep. Yep. So your your half brother. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Same with me. I've got a half brother, but we grew up together, so we always consider each other full full brothers. Oh, I don't. Know? I don't look at it any other way. Yeah. You, you know, I don't. That's it, it's it's like my brother's line now. So I don't really speak to him at all because. Uh, we had a, like a massive. No, oh, he he's okay, but I just had a fallout with my mum when they stole all my money and stuff when I was in jail, yeah. and took the house and shit, and just you know decided to take fucking two hundred grand that I had snookered, and they just, just they're just ugly people. So and uh, fuck that sucks, man. Sorry, oh, fuck, mate, mate. But they, when you're getting sentenced, you think that your sentence is it, and then all of a sudden it just it just shit just keeps happening. You just go fuck. When's this gonna end, <laughs> mate? Like seriously, so. I don't really talk to him. He's never done anything wrong. Yeah. But he kind of just sided, sided with, with, with 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 mum and that. And like when I when I got out and I went to dinner with my new partner and my uncle and auntie and cousins, uh, which they're the only ones that I actually speak to on my mum's side. Yep. Uh, like he he came. I bumped into him at the doctor's first, and then we kind of went down. And then that's the only time I've seen him, mate. You know what I mean? Yep. He's just kind of so he's a very quiet kid. Yeah. So. I'm really top with my brother uh, uh, Taylor and Timmy. Yep. I was with my brother this morning, so they're I'm really tight with them. Like they, you know, like they're fucking. They, they were there since like, even though that we didn't grow up, and we there's a there's a bit of an age gap there. So I'm. Where were they living when you were growing up in Maroubra? <coughs> Where was your oh, dad? So they were at Maroubra too. Okay. Yeah. So they were at Maroubra, but they're okay. So Taylor's 35 and Timmy's 33. Yep. So they're going on 36 to 34, and because I was. They're young, a bit younger. Yeah, they're yeah. a bit younger. Yeah. And so they didn't come in to my life until I was a little bit older. Yeah. You know what I mean? But as soon as they came into my life, they've never left. Yeah. You, you, you know what I mean? I always knew they were there, but like they were little kids, man. I, at this stage, I'm 18. I'm traveling around the world, rooting hookers in Mexico, and you know what I mean? <laughs> Having dribbly dicks and shit, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, every disease under the sun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're still growing their first pubes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like well, I, it's funny. I, I put a photo the other day of me in uh, Bali. One of the boys sent it to me. My mate Insect, he sends me this photo. It's me and I'm I'm about 16. I'm in Bali. I'm up at Uluwatu and you just see the look. I think I go, saw you fo- post that photo yeah, on I just social media. Yeah, and yeah, the yeah. boys, the boys would text me going, fuck, I wasn't even born then. Yeah. And some, the boys goes, yeah. man, I was one years old. I what said, year man, was I was, that? 1980, 1987? Yeah, okay. 1987. Yeah, I said, so man, I was I'll, over there rooting fucking truly running a mark. I said, yeah, I would have been one year old. Yeah, right? Were you one too? Yeah, I was one then. Okay, so my other mates. From Cronulla, they were texting. Oh, mate, I was one years old, and a couple mm. of boys go, "I wasn't even buddy. I wasn't even born." There wasn't. <laughs> I said, "Mate, you're running around punching your old man in your old man's sack." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you look young in that photo, man. You look uh, young, oh, young no. and innocent before the world. <laughs> oh no, I oh, know. Before I got corrupted. <laughs> before I got corrupted. But yeah, like, but, and that's what um, uh, uh, a lady who lives up the coast is from Ruby. She goes, yeah. she goes, "Look at your eyes. She goes, you can see you're a little devil." That's what she said. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, I, a I just laugh. Yeah, a little flicker in the eye. 
So growing up in Maroubra, um, was it like a was it a happy childhood? <coughs> yeah, mate, it was a happy childhood. Yep. I, didn't, I didn't really want or need for much. Yep. You know what I mean? So, um, but you you were a troublemaker at school. Oh, mate, I've always had that little bit. Yeah, I've always been. A, like I got kicked out of Marsland College, and yeah, I've always been in trouble. What'd you get kicked out for? Um, you know what I did was I wrote on the back of the uh, in the science lab I graffiti in black text uh, and then I got the the mercury out I stole all the mercury you know the and we used to have mercury and, it, and you know how you put it out and it, it kind of all joins back together yeah so I graffiti like oh, what, was his, what was his name what was his name brother Brian you putrid maggot like just real just proper like in black graffiti and like just you know how stupid I was I did it underneath my own. But like my table with my with, with my mates, so we had you know butts and burners connected to the tables. So and it wasn't the mystery of the century to solve that one. Oh, to figure mate, out, boy, they just <laughs> back and go. It wasn't there last and now it's here. And they just get in here. And so they what they did was they said, <laughs> mate, more or less, I've already been in a bit of trouble on that, and they just went, yes, yeah. mate, enough's enough, mate. You, you know the kids got to go. So I just went, mate, so what, mate, I didn't give a fuck. I went straight to River Bay High School. Yeah, it was just it was perfect. So you're like, everyone was already there anyway. And I've been trying to get there, but I, I wasn't like I planned to get kicked out of the school. Or anything. So you already had mates at the at the next school. <coughs> yeah, is that um, because you were surfing? You yep. got to know all these guys. Yeah, so yep. they, and everyone was there. But a, a few of the boys they went they went to Marsland themselves, and they went to Pagewood. Like it's called Maris Brothers, and that. And then we all of us, all of us, eventuated. We all were all at um, uh, River Bay High. Yeah. Mm. And so I heard on another podcast you saying that you started surfing at around the age of 12. Uh, yeah, about 13. I was, I, I was late compared to all my mates. Yeah. They, they were really up surfing and stuff and, and had when I come on the scene, they all had like proper surfboards and stuff. On, and I was just borrowing a cool light. And how did that progress from, <laughs> I mean, just learning to surf to um, – were you guys surfing every day? Was it like a, oh, was it a lifestyle after, thing? Yeah, every day after school. When, when, when you start surfing and you get that bug, it's such a lifestyle. It's yeah. it's it's, it, 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 it's your everything, really. For mm. me, it's always it always has been my everything. Like even now, you know what I mean. Like I I'll work. I mean, shit, I mean, I'll do 12, 15 hours. It really doesn't worry me because if I know a swell's coming at the end of the week, yeah. I will pump out as many hours I can just so I can have those two three days off. Yeah. So you, so way I look at it, I'll accumulate. Accumulate the hours. Yep. And then I'll go, well, if I do like the 12 hours there, that means really instead of doing eight, I've got an extra four hours there, four hours. That makes one day. So what work are you doing now? Uh, I've got uh, scaffolding. I'm, I've got a hiring company. Yep. So I'm helping the boys when they come out of jail. Yep. You know what I mean? And that's anybody cool. else, anybody else that wants work too. Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> so I put them on to um, my mate who who's the big boss. He's, he's, it's actually his company. Yep. So I, I – Give everybody a him and like oh, I tell everybody straight up we hire them out at a certain amount and we pay them a certain amount you know yep you know so it's a good income for me. It's, it's I mean my... and it, it must mean a lot to those guys because I mean one of the first things that's hard to figure <coughs> out when you get out of prison is like what the fuck am I going to do for a job? Well, idle time is devil's time. Yeah, mate. If, if you got too much time up your sleeve, mate, it's it's a recipe for disaster. If you have good structure. If you have proper good structure, mate, you know, and you know that, mate, you can't be going out on like Thursday because you've got to go to work, mate. Yep. You, you know what I mean? You've got there's bills to be paid, there's rent, there's electricity, there's food that's got to be provided. So once you get all that on and you and you know, mate, you, you have to want it though. Yep. You, you can't be forced into it going, mate, you should do this or you should do that. You have, you have to, to choose it yourself. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to want, and I think like the boys are all our age, a little bit older and stuff. They've, you know, it's they're tired of being tired. Yeah, you know, and they just go fuck. I just, I just want some normality in my life, mm. and that's and that's what and that's what I've got, and that's what I, I try to help. I think it's also it, it's <coughs> relatively easy to to want it for a short period, right? Yep. To just say, all right, I'm going to get on the straight and narrow and and work a normal job, <coughs> but um, you know, to to maintain that consistently and make that your lifestyle right for years on end <laughs> that's different to being able there's a lot of guys that can get out of prison and and be good for six months 12 months yeah. 18 months but then something happens right and they forget about how shit prison was and they well that's making. right that's you, you, you're right they do they do forget about that but they also figure that they if they want to go have like a little party or something they go, oh I've, I've been good for six or 12 months i'm mm. going to treat myself it doesn't work like that if you have an addictive personality yeah you know one 
you know, I'm not a one person. I'm not a one. I'm no. not one of anything. You know what I mean? Like if, if I go, mate, it's a thousand or nothing. Yeah. So I try. So for me, I just don't open that can of worms. I don't open it. It sounds like you were a fiend on the bags <laughs> like me. Right? Oh, proper. But, uh, I, proper I, I, terrorist on yeah. it. <laughs> oh, yeah, straight up, mate. You know what yeah. I mean? I, you know, you, I, it's, 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 it's so ugly. I can't imagine how hard it would have been for you if you – were bringing in fucking kilos because I was just selling <coughs> ounces, right? And I was just, if I had fucking four ounces in my house, like I could easily go through, I was going through about an ounce myself a week, right? Yep. <laughs> just, just up the nose because, um, yeah, I wouldn't sleep and I'd just be fucking smashing it. And even, and that was the problem, was just having it around. See, I... Ch- I'm exactly like you. I couldn't have it there, man. I had to fucking put it somewhere. I had to in the end. I had to have it somewhere else because if it was at home, I was like you. You're just on it. Yep. You're on it, and I and like you said, you don't stop. And I'd find any excuse, right? If I was happy, coke. If I was depressed, coke. If I was <coughs> anything in the middle. If it's raining, coke. <laughs> if, it's, if it's fucking sunshine, it's coke. <laughs> that's how. That's how it went, though. Yeah. It, it, so you yeah. it, you look for excuses. Yeah. You look for them, and this is what I've been having the conversations with a few mates now. A few mates have they've called me back to back to back to back. They have, yeah. right? They've just get in and it's all they're all at the same thing. I said, mate, if I can do it, anyone can do it, mate. Because I and, and that's why they ring me. I said, but you have to want it. You can't fucking ring me every couple of months. Like, oh, I'm back and I said, mate, I don't understand. And so I say, oh, man, I've been off the drink for six months. People, fuck, I'm gonna have a big one this day. I go, mate, if you're off the drink for, why don't you stay off it? Yep. Just just roll. Just wrong with it. It's a better lifestyle. Because a lot of guys will think, like, uh, I, I've done that, right? Yep. And now it's time to celebrate the fact that I did it. Yeah, right. All right. Right. They, they that's, it. that's so true, though. It is. Yep. They, they want to celebrate. I've just did six months. I, I, now, now people look at me, man. I tell them, 13 years, eight months. I've been out for three, I've been out for three years, four months, right? And people, um, people just go, mate, like, they know that this is me now. They, mm. they, they know there's no, like, um, Oh, he'll break, he'll break. I'm sure there was like little murmurs. Just, you know, he'll, he'll break, he'll, you know what I mean? Like I, surely he'll he'll go, he'll start he'll start getting on the drink, he'll get on the bags again, he'll be fucking rooting shittles behind his, his missus back again. He'll be just, you know what I mean? Like just doing shit goes and not shit goes, but I mean like cheating on your partner or stuff. I never shit goes anybody. Back never robbed old. anybody in my life. Yeah. Never done none of that shit. But um just back to your old ways. Yeah, right. just back to my old ways and, and but you went through such a life changing <laughs> experience, right? That you just you tasted fucking defeat, defeat. for so long. Exactly. Right? Same <laughs> was, they said they were same word at the same time then defeat. Jinx. It was, right? <laughs> right? You tasted defeat for so long and you're like, This tastes like shit. I'm not going down that road again. But I just fucking I man, I didn't want it anymore. Yep. I just I, okay, so I stopped before I even went to jail. Mm. I just, I just didn't want it, mate. I, mate, and when I was in jail, mate, I used that to sheerly train, treat that, mate, as a treatment camp, a training camp. That's what it was, mate. Read your books, get your knowledge, mate. Fucking do what you, mate. Train every day, every day. We trained for years and years. It wasn't too like a guy come around, boys, mate. So even on our day off, we'd do a forty-five minute call session. That was that was our day off, and, and then this big guy come in and. It's mate, because you just need that day off, boys. I said, oh, fuck it. When we when we're dead, that's our day off. And that's how we all were. We're just so yeah. our, our, our mindset was so hectic all the way through Long Bay to Nowra to Cessnock. Even when I went back to Long Bay from you know my C Classo part and stuff, it, it was just like and then the guy come in and then you know we we had one Sunday off right and went. We all slept in to like nine or ten, like just but we all kind of come out of our cells and we look and we're going. Fuck, how good was that? Like, oh, mate, that's it. Sunday's no more course sessions, <laughs> mate. We'll, we'll squeeze that in at the end of Saturday or something. Yeah. You, you, I, mate, the day off is good. Oh, so good. <laughs> so good. And then now, now I'm more for, you know, train smarter, not harder. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so good for <clears throat> your mental health in prison to train, right? Oh. Because uh, otherwise I think you can just get into a pretty dark place mentally that – I don't know how you could do it without training. Well, you're, you're like me. I, I was the same, you know. I, I, I'm a pretty high-energy type of person, so I need to burn that shit. You, you know what I mean? Otherwise, you sit there and, you know, just like, you know, your energy just builds up and builds up. 
But I could feel my mood. Like was just I was so much more at peace oh. after exercising, right? In there and but, but mate, you you're at peace, mate. You feel good, you look good, it's good for your mind, body, and your soul. Yeah. Like this is what you say to people, yes. mate. We, at, at sometimes, mate, we had like twenty eight deep training. Yeah. Like just at, at Cessnock on the over, we're doing sprints and mate, everyone's just there looking good. Like proper because you want to look at good when you go on your visits. Yeah. And, people look and when you here. eventually get out, yeah, right? Yeah, mate. You get one's go, fuck, he looks good, mate. He's looking <laughs> sharp. Yeah, but that's, you know what I mean? And then when you come yeah. out, I reckon I maintained for mine for just over a year, probably more. And then because I was working and stuff and I was training and, and I reckon, yeah. So you're reckon, still big now, but what, you were, you were jacked? <laughs> oh, I'm about 93, 94. So I come out at 98. Mm. I was just jacked. Like proper, mate, doing like uh, 500 Navy SEALs and shit, you know, like just. Mm. Mate, so the first time we did that, it took us two hours and 17 minutes. And then we, we just started realizing we do a, a block of 50, have a 20 second to 30 second rest. What even are Navy SEALs? Okay, so what you do is you stand up, right? Okay, so you go down, do a push up, yep. knee to chin, push up, knee to chin, push up, stand up. That's one. So uh-huh. really you're doing three push ups in one, in, in, in one go. Okay. That's one. Yeah. So you do that 500 times. Mate, I'm telling you now, fucking Jack ain't the word, man. We come out. The, the last night I got out of jail with my mate Andrew, right, me and him and my other mate Johnny, this older bloke Johnny, he was an island. He goes, I'm joining you, boys. That was, so I came back from work, right, my very last day of, of jail. I went to work because I just wanted to keep that good routine up. Went to work. I come back. I got home uh, late. Had to run down and sign some papers. Sign some papers, right. Then I didn't sign something. I was in the middle of doing the Navy SEALs and Chief come up. I went, let's Chief, I'm fucking, let me finish this. I'm coming down. So it was more in my head. I just wanted to, so we, we pumped out 500. I think it, in the end it took us about uh, an hour and 38 or an hour and 40. So I got everything written down still. Yeah. I still got all the, all the time. Yeah, because we, because <clears throat> we got it down to where you just need a little rest, that 20 yeah. second rest, right? Mm-hmm. And then you go again into your next 50. So, so and we just and you know, I was, and that, that was my last night in jail. Absolute beast, like, mate. Yeah, we just fucking come out. And I was just proper jacked. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I just feel. I felt good. I just, I was like, a, I was just like a little kid again. You know, I was like, I, I was reborn. There was no pain, no, no smoking. There's no drugs and and alcohol and shit. You know, you can fall into that trap in there. You can, hundred percent. But I, I, I just felt that I wasted ten fucking years, mate. I said I wasn't going to go back. To, well, to let's talk about how you got there. So when, when was – how old were you when uh, you first th- even thought about moving coke? Uh, I always sold a bit of pot. Yep. Always had the, had the pot. And I had a, had a bit of a connection when I was young. Yeah. And so I think the boys were paying down the bed. I think they were paying like 350 an ounce. And the two, all the older boys and that, they were, that's what they were getting charged. And, that. and I had a bit of a connection. Yeah, and, and um, so I had, and I was only a kid, mate. You know, what were your early twenties or something at this stage? No, nah, fuck, man, I'm still, I'm talking like kind of end of school days. Okay. Like I'm so sixteen, and yeah, 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 like you know, even fifteen, I think. So I remember buying these pair of Nikes and stuff, and like they were two hundred eighty bucks back then. You know, yeah. like these Jordan shoes, and I thought we're going, what the fuck? Like, we made two hundred eighty. You know what I mean? We, you know, so oh, don't get me wrong, I worked, I, I, I worked too. You know yep. what I mean? And. Uh, <coughs> I had a bit of a connection, so well, you were making some easy cash on the side. Yeah. And it was like, and you well, got the mindset th- of this is this is pretty fun. Yeah, and, and cool. Yeah. 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 Well, I well I um was selling the, the answers for three hundred, so yep. I was undercutting everyone by fifty bucks. And the other boys, oh, we use you, mate. Can I use you, mate? Okay, nah, I don't want. And mate, they were all happy. It was all happy days. Everyone's happy, right? Because yeah. they're getting good shit, a good price, and you're making money as well. So yeah. everyone wins. Yep. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I just I was just I went in and undercut the market a bit. So I've always yeah. sold a bit of pot. And then it wasn't until I was I, I overseas, I kind of got offered an opportunity. Yep. Yeah. So what, what what were you overseas for? <coughs> I, was just, I was surfing. Yep, surfing. So you were surfing um, as a job? Were you well, getting, yeah. Were you, well, were you I sponsored? Can, or? I, I was sponsored. Yeah, yeah I, I was sponsored, but I, I was more of like just like a, a free surfer. What so, does that mean? So what I would do is like I had my free surfboards, my clothes, wetsuits and sunnies and all those things. I'd always got everything given to me for free, but I obviously paid for my flights and my accommodations and things. Yeah. So, man, I was just traveling around the world just surfing, man. I, I, I wasn't that pro surfer. I wasn't looking to do contests and that. That wasn't me. I was just – I was, man, I was in Hawaii. I was in Puerto Escondido, mate. I'm, I'm down in Total Santos and like all these big waves. So I'm just chasing big waves as a kid, What's you know? the difference, what, what qualifies as a big wave, right, <laughs> if you're a big wave surfer? 
Uh, how big do they have to be? Oh, mate, you're, 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 you're chasing, really, mate, 18 foot plus. Yeah. And, mate, mate, even 15, mate, all that. Mate, 15 foot. Yep. Mate, it's all big. Like people just like some people just don't want nothing to do. Mate, they'll surf eight, ten, whatever. Then when you start getting to your twelve, your fifteen, your eighteen, and okay, so really, the way you classify it is all the way I do. Okay, you got these people. So perfect example is 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 for myself, mate. So you got, I would go, eighteen to forty. Yep. Right. When you start going above that, mate, those boys. Uh, like, you know, like your Lucas Chombos and like, like my mate Dylan Longbottom and all. Mate, those guys are surfing fucking 70 foot, 100 foot, Nazare and that. Like, yeah, you uh, see videos me, of that shit. It looks insane. Oh, mate. It's hectic. Well, the, the, the contest is on now, the Eddie yeah. I Cow. So yeah. I, I, I was watching real early this morning, but then I had to go out. Yeah. So I was watching that. So that's 24. See that? That there, mate, I love that. That's fucking perfect for me. You know what I mean? A little bit bigger, perfect. But then you have to bring another ball game. When you're going 40, Plus fifty plus, it's another ball game. It's another league, mate. You got you got all your vests on and stuff. You know what I mean. So you got all your life vests. You got to make sure your jet scoots and stuff like that. Yeah. So the, I, I I I put it into two categories. You yeah. Know? You got the guys that have fun and whatever, and then you got that. You know what I mean. Still big, mate. I mean, you're gonna die. Do you know what the biggest wave you've ever caught is? Oh, uh, <clears throat> I reckon twenty plus at Wyoming. Twenty plus at Wyoming. I reckon I've got a couple of. 18 foot. I got, I got a couple of shots down in Port of West Gendudo where I'm like a dot. I think I'm on like a 7, 8, so 7, 10, and I'm like a dot, mate. You know, the, the thing's got to be 18, 18, 20 foot. Yeah. Easy, easy. You know what I mean? So there's a couple of shots there of that. And, and is that around the time that you grace the covers of surfing <coughs> mags and that yes, kind of stuff? Yeah. 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 That, was, that was the time, I, you know, I was, started getting a couple of shots. Sounds like a pretty fun life. <laughs> oh, I'm always good, mate. I never, you know, like people go, oh, do, would you take anything back? I said, fucking nothing. Yeah. Like, mate, that's what that path led to that path, mate. As long as I know and I learn, mm. you know what I mean? You, you can't live life, oh, I should have, could have, would have, or, you, you know, fuck it, mate. It is what it is, mate. You just roll with it, mate. Like, I, I, I'm, I've i always been that little bit of a thrill seeker. Yeah. Well, I mean, between crime and, and, <coughs> and big waves, I mean, it sounds like there's that adrenaline piece yeah. to it, right? Yeah. 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 There, there, there is, mate. There, 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 there definitely is. And, like, I'm... I said, I'm pretty high and you know, I'm always very happy go lucky, you know, like 99% of the time, you know, you can't be there at a hundred times, hundred percent all the time, but 99% of the time I'm pretty, I'm pretty like ha- happy and stuff. And I'm always happy to surf with the boys and stuff, you know, so. So you were traveling the world surfing for how long was that? Oh, geez, man, I started at 16. Yeah. Okay. I started at 16 and then I got pinched in when I was 38. Mm. So when, it, when, when everything started to unravel was... Well, not unravel, but when I first got the opportunity was a mate offered offered me when I was um, overseas. Yeah. A mate offered me to fly some gear. I think it was like two kilos from LA? San no from San Fran straight into Maui. Yeah. Okay. So, <coughs> so I I I man, I didn't even hesitate. When I said, "Yeah, man, I'll do that." Yeah, man, I'll, I'll do that, hundred percent. But then, did you say yes because you like? You just like taking risk, or because it was good coin. It was good table. coin. Yeah, and it was good coin. Man. It wasn't like a, 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 to me. I was like, yeah, fuck it, no worries, mate. Like I didn't even think about the risk. I never thought about the consequences. Nothing. Yeah. So, I, so and then two days later, he goes, mate, we got to pull the pin. Like uh, his big brother he said, mm-hmm. no, mate, not happening, mate. He goes, oh, he goes, you're like my son. He goes, mate, I can't let you do this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I was like, I said, no, no, I've got it, mate. Don't worry, I've got it. He goes, nah, it's not happening. And then he, the, the younger brother goes, mate, he's, he's not going to let you do it. Right, right. And I, I went to him on the side. I said, no, no, fuck, we weren't saying that. But, man, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm for it. You know, and I, and I, I was all <laughs> all up for it. Yeah. And, and, and then he just said, mate, we can't do it. Like, it's too much of a risk, you know what I mean? Well, not a risk, but he goes, but I just, if something they, happens. They loved you too much. Yes. They didn't want, they couldn't imagine yeah. seeing it but, go pear shapes. But, right? but the seed was planted. <clears throat> yeah. Because I'm thinking in my head, and, I've, and I party back when I was at home, so. In my head, the, you're buying a, a gram in LA for twenty bucks. Mm. In Australia, it's two hundred dollars. Ounces in LA at that time were between three hundred and fifty dollars. Maximum we were pay was five hundred dollars. Mm. Mate, an ounce back here was five grand. Yeah, I'm telling them they go, "Fuck them, are you shit?" I go, "Yeah, mate." It keeps going up and up now. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> well, mate, I don't keep up with the market. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't worry me, yeah. you know. But, but um, yeah, there so was a huge, huge. <laughs> Earner, if you can get it to Australia, massive, right? yeah. massive, man. So, and then 
that kind of that, that didn't eventuate. I went back to LA and, and I was surfing and shit and stuff like that. Then I came home. And I'm trying to think. It, it was on my 21st birthday. I came home and then something kind of came to me, and I knew a few people that were in good positions at the airport. Mm. One and I, and I approached approached one bloke and I go, "Do you think? Excuse me, uh, more. Do you think this could be possible?" Right? And he goes, "Mate, he goes." Thousand percent, thousand percent. When he goes, mate, we, we we can we can grab that. I said, okay then. So what I did was had a little bit of coin on me. I think I had about. So, so talk me through why did you why did you need them <coughs> at the airport? Because the system I had, yeah, that I walk on the plane in LA and then yep. I just throw it in the toilet. So you strap it to yourself. Yep. You fly it on the plane. Yep. To to Sydney. <coughs> yep. And then why can't what what are the Things in Sydney that are stopping you from just walking out of the airport. Oh, with mate, it. mate, you, you, customs. Have you been? Have you yeah, been, yeah, yeah. Mate, it's next level, mate. Yeah. Australia, New yeah. Zealand, and there's another country, mate. There, our customs yeah. is so next level. Yeah. It's fucking. Like, I, I think most countries are like this now because of all the bombs and whatever. You know, I, I know it's like that these days. That's why I was wondering when you're when oh, you were then, thinking about back in the day, it was still like that as oh, well. Oh, yeah, it was. It was like that. Australia was always heavy. So, mate, you got dogs just they're cruising around with dogs. Mate, you know, and then there's just lines of like, you know, like what do they call the the customs agents, yep. and then you get your passport check. There was just lines and lines of people. So you could get it to the airport, for, <laughs> yep. you could get it into Sydney Airport, but you needed help getting it out of the airport. Yes. Okay, gotcha. So, so I would dump that into um, the toilet. Into the toilet. Yeah. The caters would pull up. Boom. And they just fucking they grabbed it straight away. The first one when I did was I only did ten ounces. Yeah, that was my first run. I did, I did ten ounces, and it was, and you only did ten ounces because you wanted it to be. Oh, no, a trial that's all, run? no, no, because that's only that's, that's all, the only money I had. <laughs> that's the only money I had. And, and when I when I come back and I and I sold because I didn't cut I didn't cut it. Right? Yeah. So so what I did was when I sold it, mm. like the, the the ounces just went like that because it was so pure. It would have been the best shit going. Oh around. mate, I didn't realize back. I was fucking robbing myself. Mm. When I I could have been cutting it in and making really ten ounces, I could have made twenty. Yeah, you know what I mean, and still charge five. Yep. You know what I mean? But it was all it was all a learning curve for mm. me, you know. So as soon as that was done, man, I reckon two weeks later I was back again. And I always used to put Pro Surf on my on my tag, you know what I mean, when you fill out the customs and that. So, man, and at this stage, uh, I think I'm only like fucking 21, mm. right? So I think I'm only 21. And uh, I mean. No, hold on. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, I am. I am. I'm 21. I'm 21. Because I get pinched when I'm 23 years old. But just doing it another way. These other guys gave me up this uh, Natel, Michael, Gabriel, and and Kurt Himes. You they, got you got pinched. At, <coughs> yeah, in nineteen ninety three. For what? Oh, hold on. Uh, no, nineteen ninety four. Mm. Nineteen ninety four. The second of August, I got pinched. Just two days after my birthday. And uh, what for? Oh, because what they were doing, these guys were they they were just walking coke through. Yeah. See, they were walking it through. So and what we like, were talking before about customs, yes. they're just taking the gamble. Yes. Yeah, okay. So they, and they just walked it through and then they got pinched and then they just fucking gave me up cold, tried to set me up, everything. Yeah, mate. And these were guys you knew? <laughs> guys I knew. I'd met in Bali. I'd been surfing with since I was 16 years old. What the fucking... Oh, mate, this is... Scumbags. A, it's fucking... When you see this shit, because it's they fucking took, everywhere now. They everywhere. took the risk. Yep. They, t- they took the risk. They had nothing yep. to do with you. Yep. Right? And then fuck. I was only buying. I was like the wholesale when they got in there. That's so I was really their main connection. You know what I mean? And then I and then I'd break it down the answers. At that stage, I could just sell the kilo straight up. You know, yeah, I'm but they money. were the ones that made the decision to fucking walk th- walk it through. And then <laughs> as soon as they'd, it didn't, they'd been doing it for a while. And they'd, then as soon as it didn't work, they're like, "Oh, it's not us. It's Wayne." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They tried to blame me. And when they grabbed me, I was like, "Fucking okay." So I think I was twenty three years of age. Mm. I was. I was twenty three. But when they grabbed me, man, I looked like I was fucking. 17 because yeah. I had this little blonde hair and they're kind of going and they're like pointing their finger and you can hear when I'm, I'm t- got taken to the feds building because I never, I've never i never given a statement in my life about anything. Never given a statement and everything that I'm telling you now, it's all documented. So yep. it's not like I'm sinking anybody or yep. or there's anything untoward in, in, in anybody like this. Yep. But um, so it, like, so, like the operation on me was called the AFP Lomit. Yep. So, so there's like a proper... AFP show on me, you know. So you can look, Google it, and you can probably you can watch the whole. I think it goes for like forty five minutes. What's it was it on uh, Operation Loman. Loman. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and they it, it was it's been on like quite a few times. Yep. On on the on TV. So what happened? Did you see? <coughs> did you get a whack for that? Did, did well, you? because okay. So what happened was, 
they get pinched, they blame me. So they grab me, right? So the cop, the feds come, grab me. <coughs> they find nothing at home. They find an eight ball. But an eight ball was mine for for partying. And Personal use, yeah. Right. So, but when they gauged the coke and they tested their coke and they tested this, it was totally two different coke, right? So I get pinched and I go to jail. I get out on bail at the end of 94, beginning of so I'm in jail for fucking months. I'm in there for months and I'm trying to fight it and stuff like that. And that really, so what it was, was it was their word against mine. Yep. Because they never found anything at the house. There what was jail, nothing. What jail were you in Ramada? Uh, at, at Long Bay. See, yep. Silverwater wasn't built yet. Yeah. Silverwater wasn't built. <clears throat> so I was at Long Bay. I was in 12 wing at that stage. That's where I was. Yep. Yeah. 12 wing. And, um. How so was that? You were, was you, were, right, you were a young kid, though. Oh, man, I was a young kid. I yeah. walked in there. I was kind of young like that. But, but I knew the older boys were there. Mm. Like Locko and Heinze, Grant, Robbo, all these boys. All those boys from River, they were all there. And then when I went in and – I must make it um, feel a bit more <coughs> comfortable when there's guys like from your local area that you know that just um, can – But you notice this in prison. Like th- there's guys who – come from areas where there's a lot of guys doing crime. And so they go to prison, at least they, they, they're familiar faces yeah, yeah, around, yeah, right? Yeah. It makes, it softens the blow a bit. Oh, 100%. I mean, you just looked after automatically. And then yeah. people, you kind of go, well, if you pick on this bloke, you got to deal with the fucking 20 other of his mates. Yeah. So it's kind of like, because you've got a lot of, you got a lot of um, predators in there. They'll see you come in and they'll fucking suss you out, mate. There's plenty of predators, you know. And, and as soon as they've got half a chance to pounce, they'll pounce. Yeah. You know, but if you're, if you, if you crew it up, you, it, it makes it a lot harder. You know what I mean? Yep. And they go, okay, well, he's with them and you know what I mean? So, and I went in there and, and then I kind of went up there and I just, I just kind of hung by myself, you know, and I just sit there and then a guy come up and goes, oh, mate, mate, where are you from? And so I'm from Maroubra. And uh, a good, it, it, it's a guy, he goes, oh, mate, I'm, he goes, I'm from Maroubra too. I said, I said, I said, where's Locker and Heinz and, and Robert? As soon as I dropped the names, he went like that. He kind of went. Mm. Okay. Oh, you're one of the boys, are yeah. you? I went, yeah, mate. I said, fuck, I'm born and bred there. Yeah. He goes, mate, he goes, they're all sentenced. He goes, they're all over in uh, in the sit part. You know what I mean? You've got your wings, you know, so so they're all on the sentence part. 12 and 13 wing at this stage are all remand. Yeah. So for anyone who doesn't know, so <coughs> with remand, these are guys that haven't been sentenced yet and they typically get separated from sentenced inmates. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, sometimes they can interact, you know what I mean, but if, if they go in the hospital or whatever, but like you, you're you right. In in general, they're, they're separated. So um, he went, oh, yeah, right. And he goes, oh, mate, my name's so-and-so and that. And, and like he, he's from Rura. And I went, oh, mate, I know. I heard, I heard your name and that, you know. And he goes, yeah, yeah. And he goes, um, he goes oh, yeah, right, right. He goes, what are you in for? And I, well, I kept living like I just said, said I was in for an assault. And they're looking at me. Mate, what really? Like, you know, because I wasn't telling them I'm in there for import because, you know, people will pray. Yeah. You know, and because I was a little kid and I was right quite skinny. And he goes, he goes, mate, you smoke pot? And I said, there's a bear shit in the woods. And he went, he goes, you want a cane? I said, fuck it, let's go. Mate, so this is dead set, mate. I literally, first night, I'm up on the land and I'm in, I'm in the back cell, right in the back hand corner. I'm like, like, yeah, punching cones. How good? Just getting stoned. Like, I, could, I couldn't fucking believe it. Eh? I just <laughs> went, what about this? And then the next day, we went out into the yard. Long Bay's not so bad, yeah. <laughs> well, oh, you know what? I, it, it's just numbing. Mm. Y- you know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's, it's mate, it's an unfamiliar environment. Mm. The smells, the noises, the sound, mate. You're dealing with fucking men, like proper men. Like, yeah. oh, I was a man then. No, I think I was like 23 years of age or something like that. But I was a very young looking, I was just like a little surfy kid, brown, uh, olive skin with blonde hair. Yeah. And, and so when I got out and the boys, the uh, the sentence boys are on the oval and we couldn't mix it with as a fence by that. And then, and then my other mate who I was talking to last night goes, mate, this guy reckons he knows, rah, rah, rah. And he's like, why don't I, why don't I come here? And there's, there's Locko, there's fucking Heinze, there's Grant Robbo. What the fuck, we're mate, Grommy. They go, Grommy, what are you, what are you <laughs> mate? I said, assault, mate, there, yeah, they got me this and that. I said, it was quite violent and that. And they go, fuck. And then they just, mate, like, this is how I went, Hamo, I swear to God. Like, Locko, he's passed away, may he rest in peace, just started screaming. Anyone fucking goes, no, this bloke, he goes, he's with us. He's fucking with us and Robbo's come over and everyone's just like that. And then, then they caught a couple of older heads and mate goes, whatever he knows he gets. And that and the boy and then uh, a mate of of the boys who I didn't know is a fit he's an old school bloke. You could see he's fit ass. He goes, mate, the kids fucking walked in getting stoned straight off the bat. He goes, he's looked after us, <laughs> don't worry. And then our other mate going, Yeah, we've got so I I, I was just mate straight must, away. 
being a young <coughs> kid, having that, it must feel pretty good, you know, <sighs> when you you've got the that tense feeling of like an unfamiliar world, right? And then you've got these older blokes that are just saying like, "Mate, it's going to be all right," and yeah. looking after you. It's um, it softens the. <laughs> The harsh reality of where you are, a bit. <coughs> Mate, it's often to Jesus Christ. It's like you're fucking coming off the tramp. You know what I mean? Like, just bounce off the tramp and just flow. It's yeah. it's so good. But still, I kind of I, I cruised and did, did my little thing too because I, I, I was training and stuff like that, you know what I mean? But the boys are always there and stuff. And, like, you know, I got on the phones quite easy and stuff. And, yeah. you know, so it, it, was, it was a lot easier. And everybody knew I was with the boys. Yeah. So there was no... Trouble. There was no trouble. But when I started to go to court to get bail. Do you think that uh, <coughs> there would have been any trouble if they'd known you were in there for coke? Um, the I don't, I don't, not with my boys. I yeah. don't think so. And I don't think, and ever, I was so, and these, these boys, they run the show. But it was but just uh, a safety precaution anyway to mention well, just, assault. Well I, just, well, I just didn't want to talk to anyone about it. And I was told not to say anything because case they try to slip people in. And, and that's exactly what they did. So the guy they put me in with, mm. he ended up being a police informer. The guy was so what he was there in, in and we're in the cell was he tried to fucking get information out of me because he would ask questions at night and then I wouldn't really you know I was just like yeah because I was so stoned I'm like ah oh, like, you know what I mean. But he's so, asking sus like what kind sus, of sus questions? Well, just 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 certain questions that you that you knew that weren't right. Particularly if he's asking you anything about drugs when you're out there just saying <coughs> that you're in there for an assault. Well, right? he just was asking like who I knew and this and that and it, it was just totally sus. And my other mate. Who, who, who I first met on the top line. I don't want to mention his name because, you know, he, he's a lovely bloke and he, he, he probably wouldn't care. But at the same time, he's like, I don't, you know, like we're getting stoned and shit. I don't want to, you, you know what I mean? Mm. So so he was there, but he's, so, so he's head sweeper. So yeah. he's on the ball. He's, he's on the ball. Yeah. He's watching his this guy's plays and he's like, just don't say nothing, mate. I said, no, no. I said, I'm not talking about nothing. And these guys don't even know I'm in for import. Or so he just said, hey, just be careful here, mate. These, these walls have ears. Mm. So and I'm, I'm caused, I'm being careful and that and stuff like that. Then one day I go, I go up, mate. My fucking cell's empty. The guy the guy's gone. Yeah. And I just go, what the fuck? Like, where's this guy? What happened was he was getting little fucking private phone calls. He was getting called. He's screws were grabbing him for this. He was going over there. Well, I'm out in the yard training and doing my thing and stuff like. That. And because the boys were sweepers, so they can stay in the wing. And they would have seen all this shit. But they fucking seen everything. Yeah. So what this put and, and, the, and the guy said it was his first time in jail. Mm. It was my first time in jail. So my min number is two four two two oh six. Yeah. Right. So this guy's min number was one eight. Mm. I still remember. I don't know the rest of it, but his min number was one eight. And they go, well, you know. Did this guy? I said, no, nah, not really, mate. I said he was asking funny questions. I, I said I just got a little bit of a vibe in that. He goes, mate, the guy's not fucking good. He goes, bueno, your first time in, right? This is how they looked. I went, yeah. He goes, look at your min number, mate, two four. Mm. I goes, if this guy's first time in jail, right? Why has he got a one eight min number? Mm. He goes, that's fucking years ago, mate. He goes, this guy was, and then all of a sudden the next day, uh, I I actually. <coughs> When I got locked up in what two thousand twenty one, right? The, the mid numbers these days all start with a six. Okay, right? but um, because I got held overnight at um, at Manly Police Station like fucking fifteen years <coughs> ago for an assault, you get a min number then, which stays with you. Well, right? so I I didn't find this out till later. Yeah, so I had a min number which started four double one two one five. Yep. Um, even though uh, when, when I was saying to guys, this is my first time in prison. Um, but so guys would think that I was like an old crim, right? Because I'd, yeah. I had such an old number. But it was only because I'd been held in a police station for fucking 12 hours. Well, this is a, this is what happened, mate. And I didn't know this till later until a good mate of mine from Cronulla, he'd been held over in, at Byron Bay. Right, so the, it was the same thing held in the cell and stuff. Well, he got a min number too, and I didn't. I came, mate. Is this your I said, "What the fuck was this min number?" So everyone's rolling in, coming in with these. Now I said, "He goes, mate. He goes, I got held at Byron Bay." Yeah, you know what I mean. I said, oh, he goes, "I said, yeah." He goes, so that's when I that, that's when I figured. So, it. so that wasn't so that necessarily wasn't a smoking gun against him, but uh, but everything else he was doing yes. was us, right? Yes. So the fact that he was still. Getting these private Who phone calls. Who gets fucking phone calls, mm. mate? I think no one's getting phone calls. You're <laughs> making phone calls. You're not receiving phone calls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. So He might then, have been innocent about the mid number, but everything else he was yeah, fucking. He, yeah, he, he, could, he, he genuinely could have been. Yeah, he yeah, he yeah. genuinely could have been. And, um, yeah, so so when we go out into the yard, they would block off uh, before you get into the over at Long Bay. There's a cage there before you actually get into the gym, right? 
Yep. See, you were in there. It's completely changed now. The gym is actually in, in the middle of the oval. They've got like it's all – before yep. it was just a big grass area. There was all weights. So before we got in there, they would close the section off and they'd walk the boneyarders through. And then here comes my, my old Sitley. The boys are going, what the fuck, so-and-so? What are you doing? Mate? He goes, oh, my guys reckon we're oh, – I, I, I was no good and this and that. And then, and then the, like the boys are on you, yeah, you fucking putrid dog, yeah. And then the whole yard just was going to go. No one asking many other questions, you know what I mean? Because the boys, they had a lot of pull there, mm. you know what I mean? Because they're, they're all like queer criminals. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Locko's in there for fucking murdering some bloke and – Behind his bash and Grant Robbo's terrorised the fucking neighbourhoods for you know so they're proper they're proper crims. Imagine yeah walking through a prison yard like that just knowing you're a marked <coughs> man and like that everyone's fucking dirty on you because they know you're a fucking dog. <laughs> these <laughs> day, mate, these days it's tolerated though. Mm. No, the, the, oh brother, man, I've seen cunts getting fucking pulled out of the fucking the bone yard. Nah, he's all right, mate. Yeah, no, nah, because he's on the bupe or something. And like the brothers are looking <laughs> after him. You just go, mate. Oh, this guy wants something from me, mate. I've seen it. Yeah. And this guy over here, this, you know what I mean? I'm just going, wow, look at this. Or for some drugs, or he can get, or or, or he's getting drugs, mate. Mate, it was the shit that I seen. Mm. Look. I think of myself as a very worldly person because I travelled the world ten times over, right? Yep. And I've seen a lot of fucking shit like it, it, or for South America. I've seen a lot of things, right? Mm. And then and I, then when I went to jail and I seen some stuff, I was like, fuck, wow, mm. wow. Like this goes down like just shit goes, like proper shit goes. Just ruthless cunts and oh. fucking just scumbag behaviour. Just, just putrid behaviour, mate. Like pulling guys out of bones because of this and I know this and that. You just go, mate. That's why we just kind of stuck with our crew, mate. Yeah. So for anyone who doesn't know, but the boneyard is the protection yard, right, for uh, for anyone that's in there on sex-based offences, rapists, pedophiles, anyone Police that's informers. like bash, put co- yeah, dogs and, and anyone that's, you know, beating up children, the elderly, things like that. Mm. Um, just the guys that <coughs> are not welcome with the <laughs> regular guys. But they're right? the guys that get fucking two and three years. They just, mm. you know what I mean, all these like um, – there, there was a guy uh, at Long Bay who was a sweeper who had been in remand <coughs> for like ages, I think like a year and a half, two years, right, and he was popular. And then um, I had I remember I had to walk to, court, um, to an AVL because – during COVID, they weren't letting, they weren't taking you to court. You'd just do it by video screen. That's, That's right. That. Yep. And um, so I was walking there, and I was staring at the back of this guy's head for ages. And then that on, on the news that night, they had a news clip about him, and his face was blurred out. But I recognised the back of his head straight away. And um, even my celly goes to me, "Is that fucking Peter?" And um, he'd um, he'd like bashed and robbed uh, <coughs> um, the elderly, right? A bunch of old people, and like beat them to an inch of their life. And it was like the second time he'd done it. And um, so you could hear the whole prison wing yelling out like they'd seen the news too. And um, the next day in the yard, you could hear guys like planning to fucking get him. Like that's how yeah. quickly like, you know, yeah. like it was – and he never came out of the yard. So no. either he knew or the screws knew that he needed to be moved. It's, what's it, what, what, what do the but, screws call it? It's called uh, uh, duty of care. Oh, we've mm. got a duty of care. Yeah. But That's you could hear, like, how much trouble this guy was going to be in if they put him into the yard. 100%. Um, but it's also – I thought it was crazy, <laughs> right? So if you know, like, that you're in on those charges, like, and it's, it's a small place. The world's a small place. How do you not know someone's not going to recognise you at any moment and suddenly you're fucking in a very shit position? These guys are literally risking their lives just because they don't want to be in the boneyard, right? Man, they're just, man, they're just taking they... a chance. Man, they're just, what, mate, look, I, I really don't know because yeah. – Excuse me. I've never walked that line, so right. I, so, so I don't know. But but you would have come just, across plenty mate, of guys. Just, fuck, are you serious? <laughs> yeah, plenty okay. of guys so, who are <coughs> to, to try to hang in general population yes. until they get caught out, right? Yep. And then they have got to fucking get out of there quick. Okay, perfect example was when we we're up at uh, Cessnock. Right? We had a uh, I was a C two, so with a six point two. So that means I could work up the main jail and stuff. But you got to screw with you and stuff like that, and it gets you out. So what you do is you got to do these little steps to show that you're. Worthy to get back into society and stuff like that because if you if you just want to be a mongrel the whole your whole sentence and it comes time for you to get out, mate, parole can go. Mate, mate, you've done nothing. No mm. fucking cause isn't nothing. Mate, we're not gonna let you back in the community. And I got a sixteen with a ten, mm. so I could have, I could stay. I could still be still in jail right now. Yep. So if you do these little, so, so sixteen years on top, yep. ten years on the bottom, yeah. right? So yep. I served ten and yep. I've done my thing and, and got out. <clears throat> so, so we we would go and um, we'd have to work up. 
where the fucking kitty fillers. It's called the Cupid program. That's what it's called, the Cupid program. Oh, even that makes you feel I, sick, it, mate. It's it's fucking sickening, brother. You walk in, mate. They have got tennis court, right? They got a volleyball thing, mate. They got a fucking fresh garden in the back with all grass and that, mate. They are. I'm telling you, mate. They are such protected species. It's beyond belief. Watch out, was that? Did you say Cessnock. Cessnock? Yeah. Fuck. Right. So they had their own private gig, right? Is that Clarence? Is that what it's called? Oh, uh, I think something like that. But it's another section. Mate, because now at Cessnock, you've got the C Classo part, you've got Maxo, and then you've got this big one over here. There's a big one getting built at the back. I think there's like four or five jails actually on the okay. land. All right. You know, so at this stage, that one had was just getting built over there, but the Maxo would have been built and the C Classo part. So we're coming from the C Classo part and we were plumbers. You mm. know, because I was going I was actually doing a, a plumber's um like apprenticeship. Yep. <coughs> so we we had to go there and we go on the Cupid program. I go, fuck truth. I said, fuck. You know what I mean? He goes, mate, it's got to be done, Cleveland. Just fuck it. And then all of a sudden you walk in there and you look around and you go, what the fuck? The fucking bloke was just fucking two cells down from him. I'm going, this fuck, mate. Yeah, mate. Like, I, mate, I reckon I've seen six heads that I'd seen over the years in doing the Cupid program because they're in there for fucking rape and fiddling with, um, tampering with kids. But they'd, mate, but they'd been in the general population just mate, not lying about what they were in there Exactly. For. Yeah. Exactly, mate. I was just going, what the fuck? And then my other mate, we're looking at each other and go, well, that, that's that boat, man. But, mate, he was just there in, in the yard. Yeah. What about this? Like, and like people go, oh, he's in that chair. No, they, they've got to do the Cupid program before they get out because they won't <laughs> let him out. Mm. Otherwise, they won't let them out. You know, they got to they got to dress their, their their sex offending. You know what I mean? But they got the best wing shit suits, all carpet. It's all fucking flush, <laughs> mate. It makes you it yeah. makes you sick. But that's why I always say, but there's a, there's a secret society with these judges and that. How the fuck do, do you tamper with ten kids and rape ten kids, right? And get three years? Yeah. How does that work, mate? And then drug dealers and fucking. Bank robbers and all kinds of stuff. Getting fucking twenties. Yeah. You're getting you're, you're getting like murder charges, mate. Murder sentences. Mm. It's fucking insane. Mm. Like it's proper insane. This is what people they don't see. The the the, the general public are like, oh yeah, drug, mate. Don't get me wrong. Hundred percent. It's illegal. It's against the law. Yep. Hundred percent, mate. That, that's what it says. But but what I don't get is how these people get away with it. Mm. Like how 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 do they get away with these tiny little sentences, mate? Yeah. Like even your George Pell's and these pieces of shit like, that when, knew all these stuff. Like, like it's like it's fucking destroyed hectic. Destroyed people's souls forever. You yeah, know? but you yeah. okay? You destroy their yeah. souls. You destroy you destroy their parents' souls, the grandparents' yeah. souls, and then that poor soul that got destroyed, he filters that down. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like, mate, you're affecting fucking. Families, yep. like probably fair enough. We, we're doing drugs and stuff and bringing in, and but we're not twisting arms. We're not manipulating people to go. Yeah, take it, mate. That's not a mate. If you wanted it, it's there. It's yep. like a service. Like you, yep. you know, it's illegal. I'm not trying to fucking justify anything, but that's right. But but in the same, but these people, they're proper predators where they mm. come in and they're manipulating situations and they're grooming. Yeah, I mate. Slap on the wrist, mate. Do your two years in a little fucking soft jail with your tennis courts, your volleyball, all your courses. You've got fucking grass at the end, growing your own veggies. I, I just – I can't imagine – it's insane behaviour to also try and hang out for a little while in general population, right, trying to hide that shit because, uh, right, like – People talk, stories get out. Uh, you you would wake up every day having to have eyes in the back of your head, just uh, thinking like, <coughs> "Is this the day I'm going to get found out?" Because I mean, when when if word gets out and and you're still in there, like <laughs> <laughs> it's going to go from zero to a hundred very quick, right? Like so quick. Okay, there was a couple of other people right when we we're in Cessna. Right? Yeah. Sorry, Hammer. Sorry. Yeah. There was a couple of other people, and we just we were just quizzing about them, right? And some of the screws were pretty good. Mm. Right in 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 the in, in saying right because sometimes they just go it's just their job so they just go mate listen keep your kids close to you this is what they'd come and say when you're on a visit and I go fuck me true but uh, she she ended up getting moved and she she you know she so she would guess she wouldn't point out who it was she says there's people out here that shouldn't be here. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, so, the, so and that's what I'm saying. Being so, they would give you the heads up because they know that we're 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 pretty fair people. Like you know, we're not we're not kiddie fair. We just all we're doing is making it. Maybe there's people out there. Right. So we so we kind of had a clue, and you know they're giving out lollies, and, and there was a couple of them. Right. There was two of them, mate. All of a sudden, right. The, all of a sudden, I think in three days, 
we had a bit of a hook up. So we, and I said, listen, mate, listen, I said, you need to fucking look these cocksuckers up. I said, what are they in for? All of a sudden, I think in three days, we chased five people out of there mm. and they blamed me and my mate. They blamed us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Tell me it's Cleveland, Cleveland. You know, so what they did was, because we had the we had the 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 mail we had the inside mail like one of the boys because he was a clerk so he was feeding us the, the mail, and by mail you mean their charge their yes. charges yes yeah yeah right yeah. so he'd get on there you know what I mean and mm. so and so he so he'd get on there right mm. and so we found out mate, the, and then all of a sudden word got out boom they'd fucking quickly pack them up lock the jail down get them and you go yeah you putrid dog yeah. and off you go you yeah. these guys were rolling around out in visits and that and I, and I was just going how the fuck you know like they, they were here for kitty fiddling right okay kitty fiddling <coughs> There was this one guy in there. His name was Scott something. Fucking, I, I don't even throw, I don't even fuck throwing her names out if you're a putrid. You know what I mean? And then he got caught tampering with his nine year old sister, like proper, like you know what I mean? That's why his family never oh, visited, okay. but his girlfriend always visited. But the family that didn't, we just kind of, and then we found out mm. and made the fucking block the jar. They they escorted him out. The fucking the squad come in and, and walked him out. We got rid of five people in three days. They knew it was us, <clears throat> and they knew they didn't know how that we were getting the mail. Yeah. They didn't know. but So were these guys just getting like threatened or like touched up? Oh, mate, no, no. We couldn't even get our hands to them. Because yeah. as soon as we found out, we were, mate, so one of their little fucking friends went back and got them. They know. Boys know you're in for this, you're in for that. And then they'd run. So they'd run to the office and then the, what the office would do, well, they'd block both doors. Mm. So so where <coughs> even the people are locked out and then the squad come up, come up boom, and, and they'd, they, they'd march them. Out, you know what I mean? Yeah. And everyone's just screaming, you putrid mutts, you know what I mean? And I, yeah. I got my celly and I locked up um, for a few days because I would um, I said I had a cold during COVID and they, fly, they locked us up um, for a couple of days pending a COVID test. And when I got out, the cell next to mine had like police tape all over it and it was blood all over the floor. And I um, I said to my mate who had been in that cell, I said, fuck, what happened? And he goes, um, he goes, my, my celly had left his charge sheet in the bin and um, he'd, like, <coughs> he'd beat up a baby, all right? And um, so they'd said to him, like, mate, you've got half an hour to get the fuck out of here. And he was like, no, nah, fuck that, I'm not going. So then a couple of guys just went in and absolutely wailed on him and broke his jaw and everything, yep. right? Um, but that's how quickly um, uh, things can go sour, right? But also I, the, the guy had had a, I had a fair warning and just thought like, – and Refused still, to go. And still like thought he was sweet in the in the yard, but no, it's there is a very clear distinction between um, people's charges that are tolerable out in the yard yep. and, and not right. Hundred <coughs> percent, fucking hundred percent. But it's like that, like you yeah. said, hey, mate, some people get the warning, they they, they go nah. But and sometimes, sorry, and sometimes it's hard. Like if you got your Asians, your Islanders, your brothers, mm. your Lebos, and that, and if it's one of them, mate, it's hard for an Aussie just to rock in and just and cave his head in because then the then the Lebos will get dirty or the Islands, the Kurus, the brother, whatever. They oh mate, yeah. I go mate, brother, you got to deal with this <laughs> shit. These people are going to go, but then it it doesn't work because they might have a bit of money on the outside. Someone might be like, no, oh, they can stay, and then it just, it just tarnishes their names, mate. Yeah, it happens to Aussies too. I'm not just saying, you know what I mean. Yeah. But we were always cleaning house. We always cleaned house, mate. Always, mate. We knew, mate. You're fucking out. We didn't give a fuck what you brought to the party. If you're no good, you're out. That's why I was, I was in a weird way. I was so glad that I was all over the news for my charges. Yeah, right. They were like mushroom dealer, acid dealer, MDMA dealer. I'm like, all right. Well, at least that's out there and everyone knows yes. that it's legit, right? Yeah. <laughs> so in a weird way, I'm like, oh well, I'm fucked if I ever try to get a job. as like <laughs> back when I get out. But for yeah. now, yeah. at least people know that I'm what I'm saying. I'm in here for is legit. You yeah. know, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and would have been the same. You know? Yeah, it, it, it is. But for me. I, I was very lucky because I so when I went straight into I came into Darcy, oh, mate. There was fucking I think there was like six or seven seven sweepers even because it's got the Darcy one and Darcy two, and mate, uh, six of them from Maroubra or, mm. or Balmain, my area, like who I knew, and then there was only one from some. You know what I mean? So I came in and was just like, yeah, mate. But see, if you come in with big charges, mm. you got people. Going, oh, mate, this guy's got money, mate. He's pretty important. He's doing this, mate. So you'll get some putrid trying to stamp you. Mm. You know what I mean? They come in, mate, for this and, mate, we fuck it. And what they'll do is they'll try and get the number plate of your missus's car coming to visit or they'll get your missus and they'll, they'll know somebody at the RTO. They go get your thing and they knock on the door and say, listen, mate, we know your partner's in there. Fuck it, fork up a hundred. You know what I mean? And fuck it, we come back and stuff and then, you know, you get a phone. It's like, mate, hear that shit all the time. Mm. All the fucking time that shit goes on. Yeah, I... 
I um, got warned about that by I had like an old curry silly for a couple of weeks, and he um, <coughs> heard me say that I was in there for magic mushrooms. And he's like, "Don't tell anyone like that you're in here for drug dealing." But like at that point, my, half the yard are in yeah. there for drug dealing. That's right. right? Yeah, yeah, half yeah. the guys are in there for drug dealing. Everyone just but having a fucking fair crack, you know. <laughs> what I, mean? you know what I, mean? I yeah. guess uh, just good blokes down on their luck. Yeah, yeah. that's what I always say. <laughs> right? I used to good bloke down on your luck, mate. That's what it felt like. Yeah. <laughs> So you were in for a few months when you were in your early 20s, right? And then in remand and then yep. you, you got out um, bec- and then what? Did you beat that case? Yeah, we beat it. Yeah, you the, beat the, it. The, the, two of us beat it. Two of us beat it. And the other, the other bloke, he because he gave all this info, he only did three years. You know yep. what I mean? So he got half the sentence. So he and, got, then, and then how long was it like after you got out that you got back into action? I mean, we talked about I fucking didn't stop. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I didn't stop. I, mean, so, I, did, so I, didn't, I didn't stop. So when I when, when I came out, yeah. I already had five. I'd, we had just – because I was meant to get out at another date, right? But because then <laughs> I had to pay up like 180 grand. Um, Legal fee? No, uh, surety. So, they had to, oh, so, yeah. so we had to legitimise that. Mm-hmm. We put the house up that we just got. My partner at the time, her parents put their house up in Bondi. Right, so that, that was solid, mate. You know, so I had people coming from everywhere. So it took a few days. By this stage, I, I already organised a load to come in. So when I got out, I had five kilos sitting there. When you, I mean, <laughs> I didn't give a fuck. I, you didn't well, feel just, like fuck. Maybe I'm too red hot. Didn't it, mate? Yeah. The day I got out, right? Okay, went home, had a bit, had a bit of a, par, a barbecue and that, punched a couple of cones and shit, and and then the next day, mate, it was all on. Mm. It was all on, mate. Like I just, it was. I, but I just, I'd never like now. I would never in a million like thinking. About, I'd never in a million years. But that was my mindset back there. Like I really didn't care, and I really didn't think of the consequences yeah. because I never thought I was going to get in trouble. If you, if you're going to do something right, and you think you're going to get in trouble all the time, mate, you're not going to fuck it. You know, you're going to be a second guy. Oh, fuck, and you can't do that, mate. That's. I was totally relaxed about doing it for so long because I thought I was invisible, right? Yep. But as soon as I got caught and I'm 100% invisible, I thought, well, I'm not doing that again because I've fucking got a target on my back. But you, you had a different mindset. You'd just it's, gotten out and you were, you were like, fuck it, let's roll again, Yeah, right? mate. I was fucking straight up. Yeah. I, I, like I said, I already had, I had the five sitting there. So, so I already had the I had the buy. So I, I pulled one one aside and I just broke it down into Oscars. So I'm yep. selling like 10 packs and ounces here and there. You know, and probably just going, bro, like what the fuck? I'm and you're making much bigger margins off that, right? Oh, mate, off, massive. Massive yeah. margins off that, you know yeah. what I mean? Because you're chopping into it and, and, and like repressing and selling them. And, and, and you're it, selling it at retail, right? You're selling yes. it at a fucking whole fl- – Yeah, the, I never sold it uh, uh, like uh, um, uh, uh, grams. I never did that. I, well, I, like I always just – you know, like I'd sell like, a couple of Oscars to the boys and if you want a 10 you know what I mean, and, and stuff like that. Yeah. So I was always doing that. I never bro, had – I was never like the bag man yeah. or doing that. Did you – so <coughs> when you first started flying it in from – from overseas, right? So you were flying in out from LA. Um, what what was the process to um, strapping it up? What, 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 how does that work? Okay, so I would go see the boys when I land in LA. Yep. I go see my boys who I knew. I said, I'm here. I'm going to need a couple. Rah, rah, rah. So two and a half. I'd do comfortably by myself. Two so, and a half kilos. Yeah. Yep. So I, and then what I would do is let them know that I, on this date that I need it. I said, yeah, done. So I'd go do my thing, surf, and I'd go up snowboard and come back and stuff like that and go in and ring them and go, mate, I'm here. they pick me up in the morning. I'd receive the, say, two and a half kilos. I'd go back to a mate's house, and what we would do is we would roll it out. Yeah. So we would roll it out with, like, a big rolling pin, like a rolling dough, a pizza dough, whatever, and we would put plastic on the bottom and we have a big hard base. So this is just trying to flatten <coughs> out the gear so yeah. you can just roll it around your whole body? Is yes, that the that's process? It, yeah. yeah. So, so you can body wrap it. Yeah, you know, so we just obviously wrapped it and we and we vacuumed. Are you having? It. Are you ducking? Dip, dip never into once. It? Uh, no, never, never once did I ever ever have a fucking line before I did any work, mate. I was solely business. And everyone, everyone who knows me will vouch and say the same thing. Anybody who goes, mate, you, but listen, don't get me wrong. When when the job was done, time to party, fuck, mate. Yeah. Look out, but but but, you but were sharp back during. then. But back then, I was never really a part. I was more of a beer and bong man. Yeah. Don't think me wrong. As I'm fucking rolling this shit out and we're doing this, I'm punching 10 cones because that was my thing. Yeah. 
so like and, and, and back in the day, I go, let's have a little Peppy Le Pew. So a little Peppy was like a little line this big just to give us a little pep. You know yep. what I mean? Let's have a little Peppy. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's nothing. And, and, yeah. and, it's, and it's nothing. Like at, at the end, I'm doing fucking foot long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I call them Godzilla lines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The figure's a caterpillar, you know? And it's like no one's. I, I, I had to have them just to fucking feel anything. Right? Yeah. It's, it's the same. <laughs> I was there, stop at McDonald's, get that big, <clears throat> thick plastic McDonald's straw because it's so much, you know, it's so thick. And you just gag and shit. You know, as soon as you do one ball on a brasco, you're pumping a shit, and right, and then all of a sudden have another little chaser, yeah, and then and, and, and you walk off. <laughs> so yeah, oh, mate, just, but when you look at it, honestly, it kind of fucking it makes me a bit sick. Mm. Like, I, but you, you don't realize <laughs> when you're in it, right? You just you're too close to it. It's only when you've had time to kind of be pulled apart from it and you look back on it almost like a spectator. Yes. You're like, fucking hell, what, what was going on? That's a good on? term, like you're a spectator. Like, yeah, yeah, mate. Like, And people were always like, mate, fuck, brother. You, you, I said, nah, mate. I said, I sprinkle this shit on me cornflakes. I said, fucking don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I used to say. Yeah, it's weird. She said, don't worry about it. You know, people just go, is that your fucking line? I just come in, just like that. Oh, yeah, we used to joke that I had, um, I had blood in my cocaine stream. You know, <laughs> instead of the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> this is how this is how addictive it, it gets. You know what I mean? And like we we can laugh about it now because we're we're so far on the other end of the we're, spectrum. Yeah. It's it's like it's it's laughable to us. You know what I mean? And and at the same time, is <clears throat> I can go out now. My boys want to party and whoever. Girls same. Like, but not but, tempted. I mean, I don't even have the itch. Mm. I don't even have an itch to have a drink. Nothing. Yep. Like, like they go, surely, mate. Like, even when you're paroled up because it says I can't drink and shit, you know, like, on, on my parole form and stuff. Like, hey, mate, I'm fucking done. I said, you're just not going to, you know, and a couple of other boys are in. Oh, mate, once you, mate, you'll have a little thing. Maybe a little bit of M. And I go, mate, it's, it's done, brother. I'm telling Game you. Over. Oh, it's fucking, mate, I want to chase. My thing now is I want to chase waves. Mm. Oh, that's my whole thing. Like, when I can get half a chance and, I, and I'm traveling. It's fucking all like Donkey Kong. I'm gonna really, uh, I'm gonna really knuckle down. Like I'm training and doing that, but I'm really, I, I chase around here in Australia. Yep. But when it's time to go overseas and stuff, when I'm fucking knuckling down, my my fucking diet's gonna be tight. When I'm gonna be training, I'm gonna be doing underwater training. When I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, you know. But it just makes life <laughs> a lot simpler when you're not fucking chasing gear. You know, well, mate, you're more you, you're more coherent. Yeah, you're fucking present. You're here. You know, you're not kind of fucking high as a kite. Then they come down. You're taking a couple of volumes that don't work in the end. Then all of a sudden you're on the zennies, mm. right? Then mate, you're waking up fucking two days later. Kids have fucking been the birthdays. They've been fucking up the coins and back, and you're just waking up like it's just like it's just it's not a life. <clears throat> it's sickening. So you're rolling up the cocaine in LA, right? You. Yep. You got it strapped onto you, and then um, what was the process going through the airport? Well, mate, I, like I mean, I'd like I'd always fucking punch. I, I never changed my routine where I was a stoner, so I kept getting stoned. I'd get down to LA airport, stop in at fucking In and Out Burger, a couple of burgers, uh, pump a few more cones before I get to the airport. Walk in, just fucking straight out of the oven, baked. It's proper baked. Just uh, yeah, cruise in, check in. Any nerves? Are you, Nothing. Yeah. Didn't even, not even a bit of sweat. Because I was so used to it, mate. It was like, it was just, it was natural for me. So I just check in, mate, and then I just go through customs. Because when you leave LA, you, you only go through one. Like, when you leave Australia, mate, there's like fucking three border checks you've got to go through or something. So you get your ticket, you walk down the side when you're going to LA. So because you, you, you come in and you, you check in here. <clears throat> you walk down there. There's one little scanner you walk through. You want to wear as minimal clothes as possible because you can't wear jackets and stuff like that now. But back in the day, we could wear big puffer jackets and shit and walk through and stuff. And, and um, I, 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 I would just mosey on through, make sure there's no coins where I'm getting pulled over and wandered and shit. And I can just walk up straight to the gate, mate. Straight yeah. to the gate. Let's load, jump on the fucking plane. And then 20 minutes before we would land, we would um, d dump it in the bin. You know what I mean? Because we wouldn't want to dump it in too early just in case the plane, which it happened to me twice because of the fog and shit, we got diverted to uh, Melbourne. Then we had to sit in Melbourne. Mm. Then, the fucking, then we had to wait like two, three hours. And then we went back up to Sydney. So you dump it in where? In the bin? Yeah, in the toilets. Oh. In the at, back of at, the plane. Okay. <clears throat> like 20, 20 minutes before we're in Sydney. Because if you dump it in too early and the bin gets full and you've got some Joe Citizen... You know, I want to, want to call the steward, oh, or the miss, can you enter the bin here, mate? It's, it's full. And they come in all of a sudden, you're walking around with fucking two and a half bricks. You're just going, fuck. <laughs> so I'd yeah. always tell everybody, you know what I mean? Because I, I did that 
by myself for eight years. So you're putting it in the bin um, <coughs> and the catering company was coming in, into the plane to yeah, get it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So right. they just pull up. They did, They just grab it and then they just drive straight out of the airport with it, mate. Yeah. You know, once once their job was done, obviously they've got to empty the plane and take all the, the food, like all the trolleys off and stuff with food and stuff. Yeah. So Sounds like it was a... a Good little operation. It was working, right? It was a magic system. <laughs> and then, and then, and then we, then something happened. And then, like you know, you you always get in house fighting and stuff. And this bloke reckons he's doing more than this because I couldn't go over all the time at this at doing the back end because I had the kids in the school and shit. And I couldn't go backwards and forwards. And and so I, I left this guy over here to do that. And my mate in America, he's did that. And then there's a bit of in house fighting and between my mate here that I left in control of it. And, and um. Oh, yeah, and I was like, fuck me, dead. So my mate, he goes, oh, I'm using this other bloke. His name is Rusty Sester. I'm saying his name because the guy's a filthy dog. Yeah. So he ends up bringing our, after, we've been running for 16 years, right? Within how, 18 how, months. how often were the trips running? <clears throat> oh, it depends how many people are, that I could get it at a time, mate. So sometimes, mate. A few mate, times we, a year? Oh, mate, more, more than that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's always someone putting their, willing to put their hand up. So the same, the same people all the time. So. The same people would do two trips a year, like you say, uh, say, say they do March and November. Yeah, you know what I mean, because they're 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 going on holidays and that, but really they're doing runs. You know, so I, so I had about half a dozen of them. Okay, you know, and then you had to have a person here that would do one run and go, oh, that'll do me. I made my own. And, and you know what I mean, and, and one person here, but so so mate, you know, sounds like a run a month. Just about, yeah, fuck. just about. Sometimes we, if we thought we'd be a little bit off, we 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 would have three months off. But then after that, we'd fucking pump. We'd have yeah. a good good pump, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and then we'd have a little rest again because I like to travel too. Yeah, you know what I mean and stuff. So, so, but like we we could have three months off, but then the ne- next nine months we'd just go fucking ballistic, and then we 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 might have six months off. But then 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 but then, then we'd double up on the last six months. I mean, having a run like that work for over a decade is pretty. Oh no, that's what the boy <laughs> said, mate. You know, it only end, mate, look, what does it end up? It ends two ways. You're either fucking dead or in jail. Like it's really? I mean, there's, there's, I always talked in my head about like when I was going to retire, but I, I think I, even if I got to close to that point, I would have always come up with an excuse for why, why I had to keep going. Who right? do you know that retires, mate? Like, yeah. you know, like it's only until we, we get into the situations where we got ourselves into, you go, mate, that's enough of that. Like, you, you, yeah. da- you, you, you know, like for me, I never thought about retirement. Mm. I, ne- I never, I was never in my vocab. I'm gonna, you know, I just, I just kept mate, because the way I looked, it wasn't broken. I'm not fixing it. It's yeah. fucking working, mate. Let's just keep, let's just keep going. Like that's how it was. Even though the time, the time when it does break, it's gonna fucking yeah. When they start coming running you know, through the doors, yeah, like when they fuck. break, don't fix it. But when it does break, like it all hell's broken loose, <laughs> yeah. right? It goes, go, it goes south, doesn't it? So tell me, like the first couple of times that this worked, right, and you just got all this coke and you just turn it into cash, you must have felt on top of the world. Oh, 100%. 100%. <laughs> but you know what? In, in all honesty, and, and people will say this, mate, I never changed. Mm. I never changed from then. So, like, when I grew up with nothing to when I had shit to when, I've had, when I was in jail until till now, like, people even, in like, the heads <clears> are still in contact with, they were inside with me and, like, everyone's doing really good and working. And so, mate, they just went, you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't change. Like, some people... You hear these stories, oh, yeah, there's nothing you get out, mate. You know, they just talk fucking shit. Mm. Excuse me. Acting oh, like wankers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And no, I fucking, you know, mate, uh, for me, I've always been, and I've never been that throw things in your face type of person. Mm. You know what I mean? i just always been humble, always trying to look after the boys, you know, in any way I can. So I was never like fucking, yeah, mate, fucking, I'm the boy. Like I treated when in, in, in our crew. The guy that was running, to changing the money to, to, to our runners, to the people at the airport, to the guy who was like the boss of the catering company. Mm-hmm. Man, I treated everyone equal. I never spoke down to anybody. Mm-hmm. I never looked down upon anybody. I mean, I think that's a, a smart <coughs> strategy just for making sure no one's going to fucking burn you, right? It's well, n- I didn't think of that. Yeah. Like, what, what was it? Why would I treat that person different than that person? Everyone's fucking equal. I never put myself on a pedestal. I was just as equal as everybody else. I never yeah. looked at like well, this. I'm doing this for you. And I, I never did that. Mm. You know, it, it, we're all equals. We're all playing a part. It, it was like we're all a, we're all a chain in the link. Yeah. You know what I mean? I never ever even still this day. I don't. You know what I mean? Not that I do it today, but, but it's just I don't look down to anybody. It's must make things easier then for that transition, right? <laughs> if you were if you didn't change when you had money, then when when it all goes to shit and you got to start again. 
you're the same bloke uh, as well, right? Grew up on peanut butter and vegetable white sandwiches, <laughs> mate. So in there, I'm doing the same. So I said, I grew up with this shit. So what well, yeah. the fuck's the difference? You know, no matter come out, you know, like I've got a fabulous missus now, like a new missus. Like she's unbelievable, you know. So, so she was looking after my brothers, my dad. And I just, mate, since I've been out, that, that many doors have opened for me, like, mm. Proper genuine doors that you know people want to genuinely look after you and, and put you in the right thing. So when I got out, I was working for the scaffolding company mm. and I was bringing so many people on board that the boss, in the end, I think it was on a Friday, half hour or something, he goes, Mate, we're having half a day, won't I? And I was I just told the boys, rah, rah, rah. We're at Linfield. Mm. I still remember. So and, and we go up to the chicken store and we order our food. And it was good, man. The boss is the best, mate. He's the fucking best, mate. And he just, he looks after everybody. And we, yeah, my boss, yeah, don't worry. So it's just me and him. He goes, listen, mate. He goes, I want to tell you something. He goes, everyone you bring, by this stage, I've been working 18 months. He goes, everyone you bring, he goes, I hire out at 60 something dollars. Now, now we're at 67 75, right? Yeah. He goes, he goes, so I hire them out to Synergy. Or it was four, four peak or some the, the, the green scaffold. So everyone, all the scaffolding companies have different colours of their scaffold, so it doesn't get ripped off. He goes, he goes, I'm bring, I, I want to bring you on board, mate. Like I go, well, go on. He goes, mate, he goes, mate, you're bringing everyone fucking work. He goes, I'm making so much money on the boys that you're fucking bringing onto the table. He goes, so I'm willing to meet you in the middle. Like he didn't have to tell me this. Yeah. He could have just kept doing what he was doing. Like, but this is how genuine the bloke is. I go, really, mate? I said, well, I don't fuck you guys, mate. He goes, it's not something I tell everybody, you know. And I mean, the boy, they get their wages yep. and shit, you know. And I just went, well, fuck. And he goes, he goes, so from now on, from next week onwards, he goes, you know, you, you got the seven boys there working. He goes, mate, we split it. So, so really, mate, him, him and I were kind of going $19 each an hour on 17 heads. It must feel cool <laughs> to, like, after – the shit that's happened to you and getting out of prison and just like not knowing like where the fuck you're going to go with your life. And then like you start going down this path of just <coughs> trying to rebuild your life and doors open like this. Right. And this when it's kind of tells you maybe I, I'm, I'm, I'm on a, I'm on the right path, you know, because. Well, I think it's, it's saying that you're on the right path, right? Absolutely. But it's saying like fucking you're a genuine person too. Yep. That's what I wrote. Mate. I didn't shit on anybody. I didn't, didn't know shit. Even though fucking people would shit go on me for the whole time in jail, mate. Just shit go upon shit go. Spending my money, my parents, the ex. Like it, just, it just fucking went on. I was going, mate, this doesn't end. Sometimes I'd sit there in Max and just go, like, what the fuck? Because I knew I wasn't going to go back to the ex. Like, I, I knew, you know what I mean, and stuff. Yep. And, and so is she the mother of your, ki your yes. kids? Yeah. So you, what, you've got two, two, two no, kids? No, I got, I got the three girls. Three, three girls. Okay. Three girls. So I... So I and I'm sitting there, I'm not, you know, and I'm just going like, what the fuck am I? Going? This is the little thoughts you go through, and you go, you know what? I, I'm a kind of day by day person. I'm like, mate, fucking deal with it. And then all of a sudden, I get my C3. I'm out working and stuff, and then I bump into like my my missus now. You know, I, I bump into her. Nothing, mate, for ages. Like, yeah, hello, how are you? That was it. How, sorry, where, where did you bump into her? Oh, at? walking down the street. When yeah. I was walking back to the jail, well, she lives not far from the jail. So where I had to get off the bus. That's where she was. Like her house is there. And what happened was. Like, and so you'd walk past multiple times well, and just say good day. Well, well, <laughs> well, I was on the other side of the street, so she didn't even know. Like, so, so she didn't even know. And so this went on, mate. This, mate, I think this went on for like, oh, fucking eight, nine months. So there was, there was no nothing in it. it was just, we're, we're, we've always been friends. Hmm. We're, like I was in jail with her dad in bloody ninety four. Yeah. So, and she went to our school, and she asked me to her formal, and I said no. What back fucking back when we we're fucking fifteen year ten ago. Fuck. like fifteen yes wow okay. and I was just an idiot I, you know what I mean and I used to say to her right I don't I was like what an idiot what I knock you back not go I said look at you now like you just fucking you know <laughs> and, and, and um <clears throat> so I get off the bus and then she got like a kid she goes Wayne Cleveland and I'm walking past <laughs> and, I, and I look over and there's this kid there and, and like she had a few kids and there's a way and I'm kind of looking like this and I'm going. I go, yeah. And she went, oh. And they, they come around, hey, fuck. And I went, oh, what the fuck? And they just, and so it, it was just a general meeting. And then, and then I was there and then like, I'd see a kid here <laughs> and I was allowed to go shopping at Woolies at Matraville. So I'd go in in the afternoon and get some food and put it in our fridge at the front of the jail for when I left so I can make lunch at work and shit, you know. Yep. And, uh, and I bump here and I bump there. And so one thing fucking kind of led to another. And I was just like, wow, like, yeah, it just kind of, 
it, it, it just it just rolled rolled into and all of a sudden, mate, now we've been together five years. Wow. <coughs> but yeah. that's but it started but yeah, while you were still doing your sentence. Yes. Yeah, yeah then, then I got and then, then I ended up going to Park Lee. And then she started visiting me out there and stuff like that, and you know, it just kind of. How long into your sentence was it that you split up with your um, your ex? <coughs> okay, so, mate, I tell you what, mate, we started arguing, mate, not long into it, mate. You know, just some money, shit, and stuff, and then, and then I didn't talk to her for fucking months on end, and just like just just stupid thing, mate. And then. She, she, you know, she lost a lot of my money, and then, and then he was whinging about money. Everything was about money. Every, mate, every, the whole it was just money, fucking money, money, money. And then, and then I end up from there. That must have been very stressful for you. Oh, mate, what can I say? Fuck, I said you just lost it all. Mm. And then, not only that, she's spending like a trooper too. Like she's proper spending. Like you know what I mean? I'm just going, mate. I just said, look, I mean, nothing's coming anymore. Mm. It's fucking it's done. It's over. I'm in fucking job. So there's nothing. I said you want to? I had no concept. Had no concept whatsoever. Of adjusting a lifestyle. <laughs> oh, fuck no. <laughs> yeah. So I ended up down now and stuff. And at the end, you could just see, we're kind of like, we're just, man, and at the end, she just, she even the kids would say, please, mum, don't argue, you know. And then she'd go, yeah, but she just didn't, she just couldn't help herself, mate. Like, I'm into armor, there's nothing. Like, I, I, I didn't want to argue. I really didn't. And, you know, like, it's my, my, my kids, they, 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 they look back and they can see it now, but they just, it, it, it's kind of, it's fucking awkward. But, um, and then I just remember down at Nara and then I said to, um. Do you get to talk to your daughters at all? <coughs> mate, I haven't spoken to them in years. Mm. Years, mate. Like they just don't want nothing to do with me because they think they have to side with their mother. I said, I didn't do nothing wrong, mate. Like, I, you know. How, like, how old are they now? Oh, fucking 21, 19 and going on 17 or something. Yeah. So, so really now they're, they're 20, 18 and 16. So they're, but they're all. Coming up to being, tw- you know, yeah, so, so 20, 18 and 16. And then uh, I mean, now and I, I could just see it, mate, just this last argument. Even the last argument we had, mm. everything was kind of going, and she just kicked off. These other kids started crying, right? And I was the last person in the visit area. And when they went out and, like, the kids were crying, I'm like, sorry, you know, and, like, yeah. And the screw looked at me when he goes, what the fuck happened then? I said, oh, mate, it just fucking kicked. The kids were in tears. Mm. I had to bring up when I got back to the thing. The chief went, and I said, mate, that's the last visit she'll ever do. I said, fuck that. So I went back and I just apologised to the kids. I rang up and, and she's in the background. Ha, ha, ha. Like just, I just was going, mate, I remember this shit because I'm so clear and present, mate, the whole time. Mm. I'm taking drugs. I'm not fucking disoriented. I said, you don't have any brain fog about mate, any of nah, this. Thing. nothing, mate, nothing. And I just was like going, wow, like fucking wow. So I was just when that's done. So my, my, my dad's and and. And my brothers would bring down the kids for a visit. Then I end up going to Cessna as a C1. Because the visits there were insane back then in the day. Like they're proper, like you're at a restaurant. Like it's got this big kiosk. You're buying steaks and chicken and prawns, fucking squared. And how long was the visit for? All day. Fuck. From fucking 8.30 to 2.30, mate. That's great. All day. So you're getting out there first thing in the morning, mm. mate, you're having bacon and eggs and shit, right? Okay, for breakfast and big sandwiches and stuff. They got proto, mate. It was insane. It's amazing. It was fucking, mate. They, they blocked it. They stopped it, you know. But, mate, we we had it for two and a half years like that. Yeah. And then, then we're having lunch and we're having like steaks and this and that. And then before we went in, I had a I, I would have a prawn salad. And then have an ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll have a lot, please. Oh, mate, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so trust, trust me, when you're coming in on the visit, right, mate, you bring the 150, mm. you know, it's, you know. So 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 I go from there and up there and and I, I'm speaking to my middle daughter, God bless her, and I said, rah, rah, and I said, listen, I said, mate, I just don't want you, mate. Like, just, just always arguing. And so I go, all right. I said, I'll come to the, con- I'll, I'll, I'll beat you halfway. I said, your mum can come. I said, I don't care if she brings you. I said, she can't mention the word money. Cannot mention the word money, right? <coughs> she goes, oh, dad, you're the best, right? You're the best, right, right? Okay, okay. So the phone calls. I ring up first thing in the morning. I go, how'd you go, honey? She goes, mum said she can't do it. I was just going, I said, see, honey, I tried. My, my kid, I know my kids remember this shit, you know what I mean? Mm. Look, their mum was there looking after them for 10 years. She did a fabulous job. You know, but all these other little things that uh, it was just built up. I went, mean, see, hun, you know. So my dad and my and my um, uh, my dad, and my brothers, and friends would stop and grab my kids and bring them up and visit me and stuff like that. It was just so good because it was normal. 
Because yeah. you eat normal food and around there's play areas and that. My kids were all over me, mate. I know deep down, mate, I love those little things more than anything, honestly. They, they know that, you know, it's just hard at the moment. I think when they grow and have a few more life experiences, maybe have kids themselves. That's what I was going to say. I mean, I think the more you have setbacks in your life and things and you realise just how complicated life is, I think you just get a bit less judgment, judgmental and maybe, I hope so. you know, I mean, it's you're still young. Like there's still plenty of time on the clock. Um, mm. Yeah, hopefully hopefully there's a pathway Look, back there. They're very stubborn and it's like me. Their mum's stubborn, I'm stubborn. They're very, very stubborn too. You know what I mean? And, and look, I've, I've bagged their mum on a few podcasts, but mate, I'll, I'll always speak the truth, mate. So, and anything I say, it's, it, mate, you can check up on it. So it's not like I've, I fucking don't tell tall stories. And for, so I don't think they've, they were like that. I've, I've bagged their mum on a few, but, but fuck, it is what it is. And, it, and it's, fuck, I'm, I'm speaking the truth. Maybe they don't want to hear it. And, and I know that she's, she's told other stories because she goes, Oh, I don't think the kids need to hear that. Like, you, I go, Because you've told them something else. I said, Mate, whatever. But like I said, she did a good job. She's raised those kids for 10 years, like without me being there. You know, obviously the first couple of years, we, we, I was trying to do my best and stuff and, and help her out. And boys would come around and help and take the kids out and, and stuff like that. And then, and then, like, and then she, I just remember she wrote a letter one day and said, like, oh, look, you know, I've met somebody and stuff. And I said, mm, I wrote back. I said, mate, that's fair enough. And I, and then I was speaking to the kids and then she jumped on. I said, well, I said, well, come up. She goes, all right, done. So she booked a visit. I give her, I give her, you got to give credit where credit's due, you know, and then a lot of shit goes. But then when it, when it was on, she was a person of a word. She come up and, and said, um, like, you know, listen, I met somebody. I said, is this the path you want to go? She said, yes. Mm. I said, all right, done. I said, mate, we'd already, we'd already separate, mate. We, by this stage, all right, I'm in jail for six years. Mm. I've been in jail six years. Mate, it was more of a friend base. We, we were always arguing. We fucking argued when we were together on the outside. So she met somebody and I just, mate, I just went, okay, mate, it is what I, it is. I'd say for a lot of <coughs> relationships in those circumstances, sort of circumstances, six years uh, is still a long time. To yeah. be, um, to be before. Oh, you. we, we, mate, but we got to remember we hadn't engaged since Nara. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? She hadn't brought the kids up and visited and stuff. It was just, it was just always just, you know what I mean? Like, I, mate, I had no more money to give, mate. Yeah. I, I had nothing, mate. I had, everything was pretty much sold. Crimes Commission took everything. So I didn't really have it. There was nothing, part of what I could give. Yeah. And at the end, we just kind of friends had come in, on the, even at the end of the it was a hug, man, a kiss on the cheek. There was no warmth. There was no, she was cold. I was cold. I said, mate, like fucking, I'm doing 10 years, mate. Mm. But the funny thing is, is, is like, so she had, she met this guy and stuff. I mean, mate, mate, you know what? I was genuinely happy for her because it was good. You know what I mean? They, you know, she, she was doing the right thing and stuff. And I said, mate, I, look, who knows how long it was for her to build up feelings like that. Obviously, it was over a period of time, yep. but, you know, but, sure. mate, look, mate, but I'm not just going to sit here and judge, you know. Yeah. And um, uh, and then all of a sudden, I get moved from Cessnock and I go to Long Bay and I st I'm, I'm winding up to get my uh, C3 now so I can get work release. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm coming to the end of my sentence. I've still got about just over two years to go. So with two years onwards... If you're doing those big sentences, you can get the work release. <coughs> yep. One day, I'm names on the board for a visit. I'm like, the fuck? I'm with my brother and dad. No, no, no. So I go out there, then boom, she turns up with the kids. And I fucking knew, mate. I fucking knew. She, she'd obviously broken up with the with the guy, you know what I mean? And yeah. stuff and just little things. And I said, I looked at her. I genuinely said, mate, I never let her on. I said, look, mate, I said, I said I'm not coming home to you. I said, you've got to get in your head. I said, I ain't coming home to you. Mm. And a couple of tears and stuff like that. And the kids, obviously, they, they wanted to see us get back together, even at the end, mate. But, man, oh, fuck it, mate. In, in for a penny, in for a pound. I, I mean, I would have still found that hard to, to say <coughs> that when I – I mean, that's a long time to be <laughs> alone, right? Um, you've been on your own for you know, eight years. Um, to already have been like, I'm not coming home to you, Um you must have been really uh, adamant or, or already just uh, hurt by the fact that she'd made the decision in the first place to, we, to leave. We were growing apart before it even come, even when she even when she wrote the letter and stuff and, you know, and I just was like, you know, like it's, but, but now, but now it's official. Yeah. Like kind of, you know what I mean? Then she come up and she said it to me face to face, you know what I mean? And, and I just, mate, I accept it. Mate, what, what, what are you going to do? You can't have your head outside, mm. right, when you're in jail. It's like me right now having my head back in jail. I'm not yeah. in jail. 
Yeah. So what's the point of me thinking about this and like fucking getting mustered up? Like fuck that, eating shitty shit, mate. Fuck, <laughs> yeah, soggy shit, mate. You know what? I'm, what's the point of that? It's, it's there's no point of that. You you, you got to be in the moment, mm. and you know. And then I knew, but I knew, you know, I, I knew. And then my mate offered me a unit. I had a, had a bedroom at my dad's place at his unit. You know, so I had places to stay. I, I, even met, I haven't even met, met, met my partner, Nicole, at the time. I hadn't even met her yet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I wasn't on work release. And even when I got out on work release, I, I bumped her. Like, I'd already been out for fucking six weeks, eight weeks, or something for the first bumped her and, and shit like that. You know what I mean? So, and then things kind of, you know, there's a little bit of flirtation going on and stuff. And it, and it kind of evolved from that. And, and um, so, I, and then when she got my, I said, you've got to get, you know, get in your head. I'm, I'm not coming home. And then when I got out, I think the kids wanted me to, they, they would have liked that, you know what I mean? But my, but I was already in love with somebody else at this stage. Mm. My heart, I just said, my heart's not there. Like, yeah. like I, I, I'm not that person 10 years ago when I went into jail. I'm you, not that person. You changed over that period. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she really hadn't. Yeah. I had. You know what I mean? Like, he wants to go out and be in the, I'm not in the fucking going out and being in the scene. And, the, you know, that's what they call me and my missus now, Nick, right? They, they, so you got people, well, I didn't know all the terms, FOMO. I got a fear of fear missing, missing out. out. People yeah. go, man, we got, the people that we know, man, well, I'm not mentioning names, man. They go to the opening of the envelope, man, yep. fit, okay, but they put us on the FOGA. I go, it's fucking FOGA. I said, fear of getting asked. Because <laughs> mate, we're <laughs> business, mate, we just like, ah, oh, we, yeah, we're busy at this. You just want to do your own thing. Mate, you want to, you want to. happy, mate. Yeah. We're happy with each other's company. You know what I mean? I just, you know, and I wish, I wish my kids could, could come around and see this, mate. If my kids said to them, I'd like, go over you. Like, I'd be there in a heartbeat. Mm. You know, my middle one was staunch. You know, I'll give it up. My, and my eldest one, like, I've only seen my, since I've been out three years, four months, I've seen my little oldest one, uh, who's 16 now. I've seen her once for five minutes. That's it. Mm. That was it. And my middle one, I, 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 there was a little bit of time. Then we got in an argument and I yelled at her. Uh, I apologised, mm. you know, but she's she's never come back around. Mm. She's never, ever, ever come because they're very fiercely staunch like myself. Like, so, and it's, you know, and and then my eldest one, like, we had a little thing and then, like, you know, and then, you know, there was a couple of texts that I just thought, and I wanted to reply, but they were, it was, it was so, you know, this and that. I just was like, mate, and I just, you know, like, fucking. So, you know what I did was the best thing for me is I kind of, I was reaching out, like, I'd send money over, they'd send it back. They didn't want, they just didn't want, they just, they got, I don't know, man, like they got so much hatred for me and it's like, it's sad, you know, like I think it got filtered down, mm. even though the, 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 the exit, she's fine now and whatever, you know what I mean? But, you know, like if, if I could, I, I don't have an issue, I would talk, mm. you, you, you know what I mean? And my, well, hopefully, you know, <coughs> there's, there's still plenty of time on the clock, hopefully those bridges can get made. Hey, fucking shit can happen tomorrow though, Hemo. Mm. But this is what I mean. Would you be happy with the choices that you made like now? You know what I mean? But what what I, what I realised was I got sick when that COVID come. Like, but I didn't get it for a while. I got so fucking sick. I was half by on the deathbed, man. I was in hospital for four days, mate. Dripped up, mate. Fucking thing. Oh, yeah, mate. I got proper, proper sick, right? And they knew. And I had this for, okay, so it took me three months to become even half by decent, right? Mm. right? So I was proper bedridden for four weeks, 28 days. I was fucking completely – and I, and I was never – I never really believed in it. Mm. I never got vaccinated because I didn't really need to because I can't travel or anything. And I was just like, oh, mate, whatever, you know. It's just a flu on steroids. And, and and then when I got it, I was fucking proper sick. And then and then I heard that the girls knew or not and they just – there was no contact. Never contacted you? Nothing. Like like I was proper – like this is, this is where I got where I was so bad because I wasn't getting any better. That I, I, I said to my pastor, I think I'm going to have to call my brother up here. I said, I'm going to have to write a will. Mm. Not that I got much, but I said, I think I'm going to have to write a will here, you know. And she goes, you serious? I said, fuck, I'm so sick. And then I started taking these tablets, the Ivervectrum and, and these other tablets. And so I, and I started turning a corner. Mm. But then when I realised that they, a few people had told them they didn't give a fuck. And I just went, you know what? It's best here. So what I did was I just deleted everyone's numbers. I blocked and just deleted everything. I said because it was too gut wrenching and too painful for me. Mm. Like I, I just constantly getting like 
reaching out and money and, and this and, and that. And, and they just didn't give a fuck, mate. And mm. I just went, you know, what? I said, you know what? It's best for me to step away. I'm not going to push and try and force any issues. If it happens organically, beautiful, perfect. Yeah. There's no point on me. So have you unblocked them at least? <laughs> Oh, I just let it get, mate. Yeah. Look, there's so many ways they can contact oh, there's, me. There's channels, there's communication channels there if they want. Yeah, to. you know, I, I've, I've left everything blocked and just I've wiped all their numbers, so I, don't, I can't call. Because, mate, I've just reached out. I'm just getting these, you know, like don't ever text me, don't call me. I was just going, wow, like wow, like this, that, you know, like fucking wow, like. And I'm so clear and present and in the moment mm. that, mate, you're not going to get a better me. Like, you know. It's still, I mean, for all the the fun and the risks you took <laughs> and the cash you made and, and the high, I mean, it, yeah, it must sting a bit to, to have to 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 go through that, you know. It's it's oh, certainly mate, the, the, it's mate, the shitty side of it. Mate, it's like a fuck. It's, like it's not like a bee sting because a bee stings you once and fucks and dies. <laughs> this is like a wasp, mate. It keeps stinging like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It is. It's a big sting for me, mate. You know, and I said, mate, I'd love to get because my middle one, she loves surfing, mate. So mm. I'd love to go to fucking up there and push her in a couple of ways at snapper and her to ride the wave. You know, I'd, I, this, mm. these are the things I think. And then, then my oldest one loves horse riding. Mm. Fucking, love, and, and I believe my youngest one wants to be a vet. Like you know, I, I just, I just, mate, I, just want, I generally want to be there. Mm. You, you, you want to have a relationship with, them, <laughs> of course. Yeah. And I, look, I know things when it's like this. I know. It's not going to happen overnight because, mate, they've been away from me for 10 years. They've got to get to know me. I've got to get to know them. It's just you've got to gradually do things. You, you do you think, I mean, you're out there living a very wholesome life, doing, uh, from the sounds of it, you work with a lot of guys to try and um, help them with when they're on trouble paths. <coughs> you're doing uh, everything you can be to be the best version of yourself and be a good bloke. And um, that... Word will, of that will get out, you know, and, and at some point they've got to be able to oh, say. They, 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 they would know by now. Yeah. No, they know by now. But, mate, you know, like I just, look, I don't, I don't know. Like I said, mate, and, I, and I, when I was speaking to the ex at the time when I got out, obviously, I said, mate, do they want to do counts? Oh, no, nah, they're not ready for this. If you, It was kind of like a control thing mm. for, for her to, you know what I mean? And then I was just going, wow. Wow, like just like just let me interact with these kids They're just solely and like, if, if there needed to be something to be said, I'd she had to be there and I'm just going, mate, like fuck it's like you know, like in for a penny, in for a pound, mate, like you know like I just and I like like I, I, I changed. Mm. It, it, you know what I mean? So I not like I just I just want the kids to, 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 you know. Can you is there <laughs> any particular moment during your sentence that where you think you just you felt you did change or was it just a gradual over time? Um, Where you're just like. I think it, like, I think it, it just, it just kept on evolving. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, and then, uh, then, then I just realized like how much time I'd actually wasted. Like, do I want to be seedy? Like I, I remember. Cause like, you did a four months in, or you did a few months in remand, right? When you were younger, right? When, yeah, when, probably when you were in your early nine months or something. Yeah. yeah. And, and as soon as you got out, you were back on, <coughs> right? But yep. then ten years, you're like, by the time that is over, you're like, fuck that, I'm never doing it again. So it was his, uh that you you had gotten older, and matured as a person, but also the severity of the sentence also had. I think the I think when you the maturity yeah. when you get older, you, you just get, you, you know what I mean. Like, you become too old calmer. For this shit. You, you know, you become calmer, and you, you have a lot just, more things that happen in your life too. And you, I think you also just appreciate just. Um, but more of the simple things in life. Oh, fuck. Right? Oh, so this is what I say to the boys, mate. Okay, this and I said, mate, okay, perfect example was the other night. My missus has been really sick, the poor bugger. And I had to go down and get a script from her. And it was just driving around all day. I was just had a fucking headache. And, mm. and I was driving back and they didn't have this medicine that, you know, that they said at the chemist because it's a really high uh, pain medicine. And so, so the only place we found it was actually bloody... At St George Private Hospital, and then the script was written wrong. By this stage, it's ten at night, and mm. that camera shut at ten thirty. I'm just going, oh, my fucking, my head's aching. I jump in the car, and I so I start driving home. I'm driving up Malabar Road, and I see this thing in the road, right? And I fucking, oh God, I go, what the fuck? I kind of swerve and miss it, but really, it was this big thing. What happens is, this, I don't know these fucking little kids, man. I would have caught them. They've put this bag in the road, and I ran over it, and it had like fucking fish oil and tuna and shit, and mate, it blew up, but I. Telling you, Hammer, I was like, "What the fuck?" I had my window <laughs> down, right? I'm going, <coughs> going "What's that?" That's so a prank. It was a fucking prank. Yeah, by someone little fuckers, right? <laughs> hey, brother, I'm telling you now, there was tuna all over the car and the fish oil and shit. I'm going, 
I'll put the wipers on and that. And it's just chunks of tuna, mate, brother. So I'm pulling in. It's quarter past ten at this stage. I pull in. I'm looking at the uh, the car. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm looking. I get out. I don't pull into the garage. I, and I get out and I go, I'll go. Wow. And I fucking hosed it for 15 minutes. There was chunks of tuna. The smell. But I, I had to leave it in the rain yesterday to let, let the rain go to try and get rid of the smell a bit. Because it was still there yesterday. Yeah. And, and then you, but, but when it happened and I watched the car and went, fuck, if that's a, if that's a bad day, wow. That's fuck, pretty good. I'll take one of that every day. Yeah. Like, you know, compared to what you've been. So I just, I, what I do is I just reset myself. Mm. You know what I mean? Go, well, really, was it that bad? Mm. And I go, fuck, you know, the kids were having a bad And my missus up there, the poor bugger, she goes, hey, stupid kids. I go, hun, I said, mate, no, it's it, a fuck. It totally affects your perspective on things, doesn't it? Because oh, you're fuck, lying, mate. You're like, uh, a setback <coughs> isn't actually that big a setback when you think about the setbacks you've had, right? Exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. And here I am with a headache and we're going from this year. I've been out, I picked her up and the poor little bugger, you know what I mean? And, 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 uh, and I just went, you know, and then she's like, I said, fuck, fuck. I said, Mark, get the car washed. I said, fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, fuck it. I just, I've hosed it off. And then she goes, does it stink? I said, I guess I went down. Like, today it doesn't even really stink. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, oh, it's nothing. But you know? such a minor thing, even if it, even when it happened, right? Like, yeah, I was like, oh, the little buggers. Yeah. Like, back in the day, I would have been blowing up. What the fuck? Pull it around. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, you, now you laugh at it. You're like, oh, fuck. I, I, you're laughing because you're like, fuck. You can remember there was a, a time in your life where this would have been a big problem. Mate, <laughs> what, what, right? You know? right? But but, but, I, but I was a cheeky little kid too. And like, you know, fucking put wrapping like shit in, in, in newspaper and then lighting it and knocking on people's door when they come out and, oh, fuck. And the fire, fuck and paper's on fire there and they're treading dog shit. You know yeah. what I mean? The smell on that. I, and, oh, I remember yeah. being 16 and in cars like just um, <laughs> leaning out of the cars and grabbing on people's like wheelie bins and rolling them like halfway down the street and driving it over people's <laughs> letterboxes and knocking out their letterboxes. Just stupid yep. shit, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, and then someone's coming out like, fuck! <laughs> and yeah, but, You're laughing. That was right. uh, You're going you're gonna to talk about that like, like you do right now the rest of your life. <laughs> That's one of those, it's, you know what I mean? It's, it's last, yeah, remember that. But if you come yeah. out of your house, your letterbox is fucked. You're like, uh, some people, that's a huge problem. Yeah. But when you've gone through fucking... Helen back, yeah. you're like, oh, actually, it's not that big. But sometimes, you know, I just, I just, oh, mate, what, that's, that's minor con. Like, you know what I mean? Like, fucking, so be it, well, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get over that, you know, don't worry about it, you know. There was a story, I think, uh, I saw in the news that I said <laughs> that you, <laughs> you famously uh, tried to pay for your daughter's private school fees one time in cash. Yeah. Is that <laughs> You know, the, okay, so I had a, um, I, I had my partner at the time, my ex, she had had a boy ready, so it was my stepson. So I went and tried to pay his school fees. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and they just, mate, just not even realising, mate, how stiff they are over there. You so know. it was, what would have been tens of thousands of dollars or something like that? I think I tried to pay two years yeah. in advance. I always tried to pay two years, so I think I was had fucking 40 or 50 grand on me. Yeah. Like, and I just had the backpack, you know, and they just went, oh, my. We need to call the tax purple and shit. Oh, fuck. And then stupid me ring up my mate. You know what I mean? He got in, he got in trouble for this too. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a full convo because everything's saying, okay, mate, write me the check, mate. mate rah, 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 and that. And he goes, yeah, no worries. But he's like, he's just genuinely doing me a favour. Yeah. You know, not thinking of the consequences on his behalf. Mm. Like, mate, the real estate, like, mate, they, he got barred for like 20 years of real estate and he had to fight to get it back. I think, I think he lost it for, and in the end, like 10 or 12 years. Fuck. Yeah, he got kicked off his own board that he that he made. It was his board for his real estate company. They all kicked him off and didn't want nothing to do with him. But he, he goes, like, obviously he was dirty at the time. Yeah. And, and upset with the whole situation, obviously. But when everything kind of played out and that, he goes, mate, he, he, there was so much stress on him. He goes, mate, he goes, shit happens for a reason. Mm. He goes, at the end, mate, I got rid of all these houses that I didn't fucking like. There was just a burden on me. And he goes, now I'm just kind of living so casually and free. Like, uh, like I don't even know if he's back on the board or not now, you know. I'm still a good mate of mine. I still, you yeah. know, talk, and we have a giggle. And he's a top bloke. <laughs> I, I was with him on he New Year's just, Eve. He was just trying to do you a solo. Mate, he was trying to do me a favour. Yeah. And it just backfired, mate. Tremendously. So, why did it backfire? Because they were like, because the, the money, the money had to be, <coughs> well, well, okay, had to be explained. Well, that's exactly yeah. right. You, you know, and, and so, and I said, oh, don't worry. I walked out of the school and stuff. Like, I think I, I think I actually paid a year right, or something like that, and then I went to the tax, and I was like, mate, I, I, mate, but 
I'd been partying for days, so I was still kind of high as a Your car. brain was just scatterbrained. Uh, yes, completely fried. Yeah. And I, I remember, I remember sitting in the car park at Cranbrook and, and ringing him, going, oh, "Man, we're gigging!" And laugh. But the whole fucking thing's wired up. We're wired up, like it's the, the phone's tapped. Yeah. Not one. We're not wired up. But the phone is actually like that. Car's wired. The, the phone's tapped, and they're listening to every single. And we're gigging and laughing. Don't worry. <laughs> but yeah. And then at the end, I said, "Mate, you know, like, yeah, don't worry, I'm an old guy. Don't worry about it, mate. You know." So I dropped him the money, and he wrote me a check. Not thinking of it. And then when they come in, they fucking ripped his, like, real estate apart. And fucking this, mate. Mate, the, they made the biggest scene for everybody. They even charged my ex at the time for proceeds of crime because I asked her to change $5,000 into American dollars just before we went to America. Yeah. yeah right. But just, I said, I don't even think. I said, mate, can you just change that? So they tried to get in. And she says, mate, I didn't fucking know. Like, mate, like, I never asked him questions. Like, yeah, but like, like, could have been from the TAB. Like, how the fuck do you know? Yeah, right. and so, so they just tried. You know, they get nasty. These people. Mm. You know, don't get me wrong. Like the judges, some of the judges can see this too. They can yeah. see it. And it's yeah. like you know, they go, they, they, they go out of their way to put that extra little spice on it. And I, I was very, very arrogant. Like I was proper arrogant to the whole situation. And I, and I, and when I knew they were following me, I was, I was being rude to them and sticking my finger up and. Just all that type of stuff. So that, so it all kind of, it worked them up. And like I'm sitting there in a, in restaurants and eating fucking lobsters and prawns, and they're over there watching me eating fucking sausage rolls and pies, <laughs> and you know, just being sloppy fucks. When was the first <laughs> bit that you realised that you were under surveillance? What okay. was the first clue? Okay, I, I, I had a little inkling, right? Yeah. Just what your spider senses. Uh, what, what? Yeah, just uh, my senses were always heightened, right? Mm. And then I was partying and I was high, but I just noticed a little bit more activity in the street. In my street. It's a one-way street. Yeah, okay. So you saw more cars going through. Well, so, so, so my street will go, say, from Mons Avenue back up to Maruba Road. Mm. So you don't need to cut through my street unless you're going back up. But you're already on, on Maruba Road. Yeah. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? So, so you're only coming to that street if, if you... You live there. Yeah. Fuck people. There's walking dogs. There's baby, ladies pushing prams. And I'm just going, fuck, there's all our activity. And then I notice up on the top of the units... You know what I mean? A few people there. And then you know what I noticed, right? And I'd sit out there. I always sat at the front and have a cigarette. I'd look. There was a fucking red light. Yeah. There was a red light from a camera, right? And what they did was the fuckers, they put two towels to hang out, like they pretend they were drying them. And right between the two towels was a gap. I could see a red light every night. Wow. Every night. I'm just going like, And I'm like that. And I'm fucked. I'm fucking, man. And then I, I just knew. But then... Um, but w at what percentage of your brain still thought maybe I'm like maybe I'm paranoid? Well, because I was partying too. Yeah. So what I was doing was I was numbing myself from the situation. Because because I I had the exact same thing happen. I I had a feeling before I got raided, and I started getting increasingly <coughs> paranoid about things. And, and um, so, but part of me was thinking I'm doing so much coke, it's just in my head, right? So I didn't know. But then it ended up being right. But yeah. fuck, I didn't do anything about it anyway, yeah. right? Yeah. I was still a dumb cunt. Um, same, same. <laughs> and th th you went, that's, just, that's arrogance. Yeah. That's just, that's just arrogance on your behalf. Yeah. You know, and, and it, 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 was, it was the same as me. But then I remember going to the Clay Valley Hotel on Melbourne Cup Day, right? Yeah. So we already lost a couple of loads. And I'm just, no, no, I had a and, and, and What do you mean you lost a couple of loads? Okay, so we lost. Like they, they, they found a bunch in the toilet. Then we got one load through. Then they found another lot. And then when they found the, the second lot, I, st I started noticing more people in the street. And I just go, I said, mate, we're fucking proper off. Yeah. I, I, I knew. Yeah. Okay. I knew. Well, I, I didn't know if the first load was a lucky find. Mm. Right. Then then we got a, a, a load through, just a small one. I went, okay, now we're fucking on. And then we loaded it right up and they fucking got a big load. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fuck. Because I had about more you, you know what i mean yeah so and i went fuck i said mate i said we're fucking proper off here and then so i just noticed all that shit like i was just talking about you know more people and stuff and, and then the red light up there and I'm once they found a shit. couple in the bins right they must be thinking fuck we need to check more we need to be checking more bins. well yeah but they but what they do is they, they had an inkling on me because what happened was this rusty sester yeah. who's a piece of shit he he was the one that pretty much literally told them the whole gig. So they knew. So they were watching me. But I was at a stage at this time that I didn't need to do nothing. So yep. everyone, everything was in place. Mm. You know, we had burners, Texan, boom, boom, boom. You know, blackberries weren't out then or they were just starting to come out. Yeah. So I would text them. Everyone was already in play. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and then watching me, I'm not picking up. I'm not going to do this. I'm like, you know what I mean? If I wanted a little party, I'd go get someone to go get an eight board. 
I mean, down the pub, we'd have a few lines and, and have a party. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was a I was away from you it. You felt like you were uh, yes. separated from it. You felt I was a bit an arm safer. Yeah. Yes, I felt way safe. Mm. Way safe. I go, oh, they're fucking, you know what I mean? Mm. And then so then I go to uh, uh, the Cloverly Hotel and I bump into a mate of mine there. He goes, mate, I need to talk. This guy's a proper fucking citizen. Like, he just has a few beers, like a proper citizen. He goes, I need to talk to you, mate. You need to talk. To, I need to talk to you now. Right? But the thing was is he'd been asking for me down the boots like – Every time, mate, mate, where's my, mate, 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 and he didn't want to come to my place because mm. <coughs> he knew it was off. So he knew it was off, but I don't know at this stage, right? Mm. So, look, I know I'm being followed, and that, but I didn't realize the severity yeah. of how they were with me. And then he goes, I can't, I, I, when he told me, he goes, I couldn't go out there because you're being watched. I went, yeah. So I, about three of the boys go, mate, he's looking for him. Going, what the fuck would he want with me? Like, mate, you know, lovely guy. I've always speak to him down the beach. Top bloke, top bloke. Yeah. Um, what we want to do with you and, what, and why would he know anything that would be useful to me, right? Right. The guy's a fucking complete he's, a, he's just a proper, just worker. Like, yeah. Little do I know, the guy's built, he's building a house on the corner of my street, Mons Avenue and French Street. So he's there. Like building, building, uh, uh, he's working on a, a, a house there, right? He goes, well, I know this, uh, mate, this is serious. I, mate, his eyes, he was so tense. I just went, fuck, everything's all right. He goes, no, it's not. And I just went, fuck. So we went out. He goes, you're fucking off. I go, okay, how the fuck would someone like you know that I'm off? He goes, you're fucking off. He goes, mate, they've been sitting on the corner of the street. Because when you come down Mons, you kind of bend straight into my place. Mm-hmm. And they were working right on the bend. Mm. So they can see my place. So what happened was they were building there. And what happened was the the the, the guy who actually owned the house and the head builder, because they're leaving all their tools and the, and the joint's kind of half pie open. And they just see these people sitting in the car day after day after. So what they, you know what they did is they called the cops. Mm. So they got my guy, mate, he said, there's, there's something going wrong. We've got a bad feeling about these people. So the cops turn up, yeah. right? And then they go up to the house and then they go down there, right? And they come back up to the house and they go, listen, mate. Fuck, it's nothing for you to worry about, mate. They're fucking federal police. They're surveilling in the cream house down there, right? So the, the head builder, the head builder I knew, didn't even come and see me, the fucking piece of shit. Just a grub of a human, mate, grub. I, he knows who he fucking is too, like, just a grub. But one of the workers, they're, all, they're standing there, right? And one of the workers, too, they goes, that's fucking Wayno's house. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. And, and, mate, and so the cop is like, he's in his head, and he's just going, look, he's going, that's fucking Wayno's house. So... It's going on and on, you know what I mean? Yep. And it's, it's ticking over his head. So so, so, wow. so, so, so that's when he, he finds out that. So he starts tracking me down from that moment. So he's a good fella. Oh, my right? top bloke. <laughs> Fuck, he's shit. Right? I, I knew, but, but but that was the final nail in the coffin. Yeah. Then my paranoia went to the next level. So, well, so it's, more, been, it's not suspicion sh- anymore. It's confirmed, it's right? 1,000% confirmed. Yeah. So and then I'm starting to sort more coke. So I'm fucking that paranoid and just, you, you, you know, and I'm just, it's just, it was, ugly. and then I see him parked there. So I pull up and go, oh, what are you doing? You cocksuckers, you, you putrid maggots. So then they start parking across the road from my house. Mm. Like, so, so this is how arrogant I was. And then, all this come up when I was getting the Santons. Sound like yeah, sound like Tony Soprano or something. Just fucking out, you know. Mate, just like just being a cheeky prick, you know <laughs> what I mean? They got my kids going to school prize, and they're sticking their fingers up at them, and it, it, it just spiraled from there. And then they follow me. That mate, there was seventeen when they got me. There was I found there was seventeen people on me full time. <clears throat> fucking hell! Every day. House was fucking wide and bugged up. It was just, it was heavy. Every time we go away, they'd break in like this and that, mate. Yeah. Fuck. That was their job, mate. My job was my job. Their job was their job. Yeah. And this is how, this is what I used to say back in the game, mate. If you're in the game and you drop the ball once and they're on you, you're fucked. Yep. They can drop the ball a fucking million Meantime, times. They're going to get you once. And so they're surveilling you. You know that they are. And you were like, fuck, let's keep going. Well, for a while, no, I didn't. Yeah, you laid low for a bit. But then they, what they did, they dropped off and they changed tactics a bit. But I knew they were on to me. Mm. But then I have a meeting with the head guy at the airport. So they get me two and a half years later. So they're following me for two and a half years. And then just before, at the end when they got me, like I said, fuck. At the end, I just, I, 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 I kind of like, it was like I kind of gave up a bit even. You know what I mean? Like now I look at it, it's kind of like gave up. But I, I, I still had that arrogance. But I, I go to my coe, I said, I said, mate, he goes, I'm re- let's go, let's go. I said, mate, they're all over us like a rash. Exact words, because it, it comes up in that Operation Loman. Yeah. 
and you hear me because they got the boom mic on me. It's like fucking 4.35 o'clock in the morning and she's come and light me and you just hear every word. I'm standing outside the car thinking we're safe and because there's no noise. But you, it's like me and you talking now. Mm. They hear every single word I'm saying and, and the arrogance of me. That's why it all, it all added up my, to my sentence, I think. They must have been stressing when they're after you for two and a half years. They're like, fuck, are we ever going to get this cunt, yeah. right? And then, <laughs> and then two and a half years later, you're saying they're all over us like a rash. Let's go again. I said, that's what my words exactly were. Like, Fuck these cans. Fuck it. <laughs> Let's go. And then that was it. That was like the cherry on top. Come for it, boom. Grab me. September, September 20th. I, I mean, <laughs> surely if I, there's got to be one or two cops that are hearing that and just go like, fuck, I like this cunt. Like, <laughs> you know what? You know, like, <laughs> like it's, okay, just, th- it's funny, right? <laughs> Um, the because I, I I'd always help out to like you know like that we had a Christians church with every Sunday at our house just for kids like mums and parents with single parents and like I always feed them I gave them clothes and they needed money whatever like I so I was I felt like I was giving back yeah yep. you know and I'm doing the right thing but really I'm everything's illegal but I'm just yep. trying to do these little things to kind of justify things I think I, I, I that's how I look at it now but I never really looked at it back then I thought I just want to help people and that's I've always done that. But you were just trying to balance things out in your <coughs> conscience or something. That's what it, now when I went to jail and started thinking, I said, that's what I must have been doing, trying to exactly balance the conscience. Mm. And then uh, so I'd always trying to help and stuff like that. And um, when they got me and um, the head guy it was Greg H- H- Hines, Greg Hines or H-I-N-E-S, Greg he goes, you're a fucking charismatic. He goes, you're the this was exact, exact words what he said to me in the car. He goes, you're the most charismatic bloke we've ever busted. <laughs> you know, because because my walks of life with people were from my girls going to like Canberra, the most prestigious girls' school, the young bloke going to Cranbrook. So I'm mixing with all these fucking hobnobs and what rocking up, picking them up, and just my little wife beat a singlet and shorts with no shoes, sand all over me. And people, and like, I, I, I didn't give a fuck who, who you were. I, I didn't care. Like if you, if you're worth two hundred and fifty, mate. I, I was, but but in general, mate, everyone loved us. Mm. Like because you know why? They, they weren't surrounded by yes people. Like all these people run big business, and they're like, oh yes, yeah, sir. This down to it, mate. We're getting invited to parties on boats in the fucking houses. Let's go on the jet ski. We like we're getting invited to everything. Mm. Like, like we were the FOMOs back then, fear of me, mate. We, we went fear of me, but we got invited to every single do. Like, and mate, the school, mate, this, this is how much the school loved me. For two years, I played Santa <laughs> at Cambala, <laughs> drove around on the on, on the four wheel drive the buggy, playing fucking Santa to the kids. And next thing you know, he's all over the news, <laughs> mate. You know how good the teachers were, mate. Mm. Yeah, how fucking good they were, mate. Mm. They were so good. The parents, they went up, they went over, bended. Went up and beyond, mate. To, to, mate. They put f- food in the cupboards for the kids. They bought the kids Christmas presents, mate. They were, it was insane. The teacher said, this. We said, we're not here to judge. We're not reading the papers. We yeah, don't care. Isn't that cool? Because you, I mean, you automatically think, I mean, when you hear these, like when you see these stories in movies or like in fiction or how you picture it, it's <coughs> like that people will automatically turn on the whole family, right? Yep. Um, nah, mate. And instantly judgmental. But, oh, don't um, get me wrong. We had those. You, of course, you, you, you had to. But ninety nine percent of the people, people, some people surprise you. Well, right? well mate, some people. Like, the people you just made millions. You can't. You don't. You won't find them. You won't find them. But they're in their fucking burrow. Right? But the other people that you've gone to school with and just the, the mate, they're coming to visit. They're putting money in your account. And the ladies and the and the, and the teachers at school, mate, they all bend them over backwards for our kids, mate. They, they couldn't do enough. Like the mother. Uh, the, the couple they made, they paid for my daughter's year of horse riding. Wow. You, you, like, you, you know, and they down this, they fucking took, mate, they took them a whole lot of, mate, it was insane. Like, I was just going, I, I, I would write letters to my partner at the time and then and she would give them to, like, the parents and that and just go say, we, you know, I said, mate, said, we're not here to judge and that, you know what I mean, and stuff. And don't get me wrong, there's a few parents I had a little party with, but there was a majority of them that were just straighties, you know. Yep. It's funny how um, I think... You hear all the bad side of like when you get locked up, I think, of, um, you know, lo- I, I lost plenty of friends, people turned on me, but then um, other people that you never would have expected to be there come out of the woodwork and help you, you know? So there's always, yeah. like, there's a little bit of a silver lining sometimes that you... But they're um, your genuine you know, people, aren't they? Yeah. It's funny, you, say, you know what I mean? Like I'm mates from school and stuff. And people surprise you. Oh, so much, so much, like, you know, like... Uh, and like I said, the people that, that you've just made fucking hundreds of thousands, if not a million or so, mm. where are they? 
<laughs> I can't. I couldn't come and see you, mate. Just in case you're off, I go, mate. They fucking got me in the whole network, mate. Yeah. Where, mate, if you're a, if you're if you're in the net, you would have got fucking. You, you would have been swooped up, mate. I said, <laughs> mate, you can say what you want. I said, mate, you were no part of the of, of the swooping. I said, and I said you couldn't even go around and see the partner or drop a couple of hundred or see how the kids were. And then and then towards the end, a couple of people wanted to come. I said, listen, mate, don't fucking bother. Yeah, I've got a couple of mates like that have dropped me, and I, I just know that if I ever see them, the excuse will be they're just worried that like I was going to implicate them or that they were going to get fucking. I was still oh, too it. red hot, you know. Mate, um, you've got to come up with a new excuse. <laughs> that's, that, that's what people come up with the excuse. I go, well, mate, I go, what's this fucking Susan Seven fucking chapter two of excuses? I said, mate, it's done, <laughs> mate. You know what I mean? It just goes on, doesn't it? Yeah. So where were you when the uh, when the cops finally came for you? I was at home. Yeah. Yeah, and that's night time. No, it was first thing in the morning because because yeah. the plane had just landed from LA, mm. and um, so it just landed and and I got the text all good, so I text mate, no worries. So I text my other people that we're going to get the lo- you know the load. I went, yeah, we're all good. You know what I mean? Barbecue on, mm. and so so I threw a little burner, uh, like near my toaster. I just I just put that there, and the kids were there, was sitting there and stuff, and I was making juice for the kids, and then all of a sudden, mate, fuck, I just looked to the left because my house was all. Like a um, glass. Yep. Excuse me. And um, they just come from everywhere, mate. Bom, bom, bom on the door and shit. And open the door. They could, they could have kicked it in because they had gun charges before. You know what mm. I mean? And um, so and then they knew the kids were there. They came in and stuff and surrounded me and fucking Connor. Like like well, like when they, I said, where's the one? I want to see the one. So we don't need it. Probable cause, whatever the shit they use, mate. They use anything these days, mm. you know. And. Uh, as soon as I said, oh, what's that? And they said, oh, mate, you remember this? And they just, they, they, they run down, mate. Mate, the guy who was running the show, mate, he, he told me about a meeting I had two and a half years ago. I just, mate, fucking the, the place, the time, everything and who I'd met. I just went, mate, I knew then. I fucking, my whole gut dropped. Mm. I knew I went, fucking then, mate. They, they wished me out there quite quickly because. What was the meeting that they were referring to? Okay, so I had met this chick down in the, at the Swiss Grand Hotel. Mm. And they told me the time I fucking met her, the number of, of the little hotel room that she stayed in. Yeah. And when I'd left, mate, they had, they had, re- it was two and a half years ago, mate. And what was that meeting for? Oh, there was about a, the little load that came in and, and, and giving her money. Yeah, okay, it was a pay, pay off. So, yeah. so she was picking up the money to take it back to the guys in America. Yeah. But I didn't realise these guys were fucking already sunkers. You yeah. know, they were already fucking, they were already, like pretty much gave everything up, and that, so that's why they were on to me. But they couldn't really, they couldn't really get me, mm. like because I, I had, I didn't really, they, had, they didn't find no coke on me, they didn't find nothing on me. But then when my arrogance at, in the end, it just, it, like I said, when we did that last one, it was just like I was the cherry on top, and they said we got you. Yeah. So when they charged me, they only charged me with a couple of kilos at first, mm. and then when I went for bail. The judge was like, mate, you know, like I, we put up a lot of bail. I think we put up like $3.75 million. Like there was houses, like people put up houses. There was fucking cash. Yeah. Like if someone uh, put up 250, there was 500. And you were in remand at that point? Yes. But yeah, where were you at? And Silverwater. Yep. Yeah, so I was in Silverwater and stuff. And then and then when the judge goes, oh. And you went for Supreme Court bail? This no, was, was I, I, went for, I went for local, local court, court yeah. bail. Right? Yeah. So, um, and then like, like and the, the judges, this, this and that, he's, he, you know, they used all those big fancy words and mm. stuff. And it's like, mate, you just kind of go, no, you go, mate, what the fuck? You just talk layman's terms more or less. So he starts going on and he goes, mate, he goes, there's more charges coming. He goes, I can't let him out. He's, he's a flight risk and he travels his whole life, rah, rah, rah. Mm. Took this passport and stuff and they just went, fucking more charges. And I, like, like when you, you know what you've done. Yeah. Like you you know what you've done. But you don't know how much they know of what you've done. <laughs> exactly. Right? And when they said there's more charges coming, this and that, and the report this and that, I'm just going, oh, fuck, I'm sitting there going, I'm fucked. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, I'm fucked. But I knew. Yeah. Like, you know, like when they grabbed me, I, I knew I was doing 10. Mm. I, I said to people, I said, oh, man, I'll be doing 10. Mm. You know what I mean? Ah, you, you know, I said, I'm, I'm telling you. I said, you got that much of a hard on for me. I'll be, uh, I'll, I'll be doing 10 and sure enough. That's what you did. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I did, mate. Exactly what I did. But I, I, I knew because I had a hard one. Like I just, you know what I mean? And, and, and it really, it was like my audacity and my my lack of care. Just I, I was just to them, you know, fuck you, your grubs and that. And then when they got me, I just, you know, I went, oh, well, 
it sounds a bit like that, I mean that point where you know that they're looking at you hard, right? <laughs> you know you've been under surveillance, and you're still saying let's go again. There's part of it that seems like it's got to be self sabotage. You know that you're like fuck it, like uh, I want to burn this to the ground, right? Later on, when you look at it like that's exactly, that's what I was doing because I was so fucking paranoid. And just so, like, just partying like a rock star. But in saying that, I, I was like going mad and partying. But towards the end, I was tired of being tired. So mm. I put myself in a rehab. Mm. I, I, I'd done rehabs before. But it was to please everybody else around me. Because they said, you need to do this, you need to do that. Mm. But, I, but I, gen, I generally didn't do it for myself. This one, I put myself in there. And this was just before you got nicked? Yeah. Yeah. So you were probably – it felt like you were at a turning point because you – yeah, you, I mean you were engaging in self-sabotage behaviour, right? Mm. And so part of you is thinking, fuck, like <laughs> my brain's not thinking right. I'm fucked. I need to stop doing the coke. Yeah. It's hard to, you know, kind of wonder what if, if – if, if whether you would have steadied the ship and turned things around, you know, if you didn't get locked up or whether – You know what? In, in all honesty, mate, I don't think I was going to stop it. Mm. Fucking something happened. I, I, I dare say things have changed now because you've got to work f- walk through scanners and shit like that. You know what I mean? But <laughs> I was going to uh, like, was I going to start smuggling? Mm. Probably not. Mm. It was a fucking, it was, a fucking, it was my money. Yeah. Like that was, it was my money maker. You know what I mean? I fucking really didn't know any other way. Like, I I've was addicted to the <coughs> the drugs, obviously the lifestyle, <coughs> and I just I liked being the hookup. I liked. I li- I liked being bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like I was obviously on a, on a much, much smaller scale to you, but like it sounded like you, you liked being the risk, the risk take. You liked being the, the guy that was making moves. Yeah. But like I would, but the, you know, honestly, mate, I was so fucking low key for so long, mm. like proper. Like I, like I never told it, like I always sold a bit of pot too. So that was, I would tell people that's my, 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 um, my main money income that they'll just get a bit of pot, the pounds of pot, you know, like why fucking, like I was, yeah, but at the end, mate, people knew, but like, but could they put A, B and C together? If, even my ex, I, like I never, ever fucking told her this was, you know, this, I, I never said, because she could have been charged too in the end when you think about it. And, I ne- that's, and they knew that she didn't know the A, B and C's of things. Mm. You, you, you know what I mean? She knew I was fucking, mate, she, she knew I wasn't knew, going nine to five. And she fucking, knew the money was coming from somewhere. She course. just didn't ask questions, right? Never, never, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and, um. And, and, and people around me, they never ask questions. Like I'd always go overseas, so I'd be here, then I'd be gone and shit, you know. So it's the old saying, like out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, that's how I try to do it. So that way, people don't have to talk about you. Mm. You know what I mean? So I was like, mate. <laughs> so, well, it, look, in the end, it all caught up, didn't it, mate? And it, you know, like fuck. Look, I, I did it for sixteen years. I got sixteen years. Yeah, on sixteen years on top. You know what I'm saying? So, so it, it, like. Like I said, water finds its own level. It all equaled out, didn't it, mate? I think um, people would think that when you are paranoid and you think that they're – and you know for a fact that they're looking at you, that the behaviour would be to just fucking pack it in, right? But I think there's a lot of guys that choose to do crime that just don't have that mindset, right? They they, they think, fuck it. Fuck it or – I'm too clever for them or there's just the, – there is a, 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 a the risk taker mentality and also just the arrogance, yes. right? I, that, I don't think you're alone in that thinking. I think that's common yes. between p- people that decide to run the risk at all, yeah. right? Because yeah. <laughs> you get so – I think over a long period of time, you just get so <coughs> – the risk gets so normalised. Yeah, well, look, fuck, like, when you do it, you don't really think you're going to get busted, do mm. you? You, you, you? You know, like it's, it's… Yeah, you think not me. Yeah, you know, if you think you've got everything covered, I've got that covered, that covered, you know, that that's it's all sweet, you know what I mean? But yeah. it's, like it's, it's not, it wasn't sweet, mm. you know what I mean? Especially when you've got people that, you know, that are leading them to you anyway, you know, and it's like, mate, it, it just… I, I had um, the when I was trying to get a liquor license for my restaurant, uh, I had the uh, 
had to do like a police check yeah. or something. And as part of the uh, uh, reasons why I shouldn't be allowed to get a liquor license, the King's Cross Police had said that we believe Andrew is involved in the sale of illegal drugs. And even that, I, I knew that they knew, right? And oh. I didn't, I didn't give so, them. So, so, but so, but so you, you didn't get the license? No, I got the license because the, my lawyer was like, well, there's no fucking evidence of that. Okay. And then, and then, like, not long after that, I got raided. But I, I, I knew that and I still fucking kept going because I was like, fuck, like, they're idiots. Yeah. You know? Well, it's, so it's, it's, that, it's that arrogance, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. And it's, and it's that mindset because it's, 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 mate, it's fucking big. Mate, listen, there'll be, ne- there'll be never an end to it. Mm. There would never be an end to people like us, mate. Like, really, is it, as much as people want to think and fucking live in a fairyland, mate. Mate, there's so much money involved in it, and, you know what I mean? And, yep. and, and people and people want to – look, they can live a certain – and go to work and that. Sometimes people just want to let their hair down, mate, and just go, fuck it, and do that little bit of naughty. Like, do a little line of coke. Yeah, I'm fucking naughty. Like, it's – I My experience, why I was comfortable with all this stuff was because I, I didn't see any um, behaviour or destruction with – any like I was selling mushrooms, acid, MDMA, cocaine, and ketamine, and I wasn't seeing anything <coughs> that was any worse than the destruction of alcohol and gambling, right? Um, in fact, with mushrooms and acid and MDMA, a lot of times more, way more positive. You yes. know, people people going on camping trips and fucking seeing the universe on mushrooms and coming back and hugging their friends. Yeah, like, I wasn't. I, I, oh, yeah. so you, I said, look, I'm the same thought as you. I, I really am on the same with those, those things, but at the same, it, it's an illegal drug. It was illegal, right? And so I, I just I disobeyed the law because I didn't agree with it. Yes, right. Same. <laughs> like I don't think it's, I don't think it should be illegal. So I'm just going to ignore that law and yep. do what I want. And um, so that comes <laughs> in that arrogance piece. You yeah. Know, of just thinking. Um, but, but a lot of not, I think these days a lot of people are on those same lines then with your mushrooms and stuff like, mate, they're, they're fucking so fucking harmless. Mm. Like really, they're, just, mate, they're enjoyment. Mm. Like, okay, yeah. like, okay, picture a guy smoking five cones, right? Yep. Maybe 10. Picture a guy with fucking five or 10 beers under his belt. Mm. Who do you think is going to be more fucking raged? Yeah. Like a guy that's just stoned as you're sitting there going, like these or some guys fucking half tanked fucking thinking he's got his chest puffed yeah, out. Like just barely bump into his shoulder and he <coughs> fucking punches you in the back of the head. You've got yeah. the fucking guy sitting at home getting stones, he's kicking back, watching music and have a, having a chat and having fun. I think um, people are becoming more aware of that, um, yeah. but it's still going to be quite a long time before I think before the laws reflect the view of society. Well, look at America and all these other places. You know, look at Amsterdam. They've been going forever. Look down, Look at Portugal. Like the yep. crime rate when they have all these clinics and all these open houses where you can go and do all these things. Man, look at the fucking – the crime rate dropped 70%. Mm. It was something ridiculous. Yeah. Like, well, there's, yeah, there's states in the US now that are uh, either legalising or decriminalising magic mushrooms. Yep. Um, and, <coughs> um, yeah, look, I think there's there's a long way to go in, in those – that pathway, but um, I, I, I think people are um, seeing that that these drugs, which were like have been vilified for so long, um, are, are no more dangerous than a lot of things that are, are legal. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, but that being said, <laughs> still, this, you break. You, you know, you, you do the, the crime, you do the time, that's, right? But that's that, that's the same. But that's what happens these days. You do the crime, you do the time. But people, a lot of people, want to do the crime, but they want to time, do the time. That's yeah. where they all fucking roll now. And that's mm. why you got most of the jails. Like you know, you go to Long Bay, you got like seven wing, nine wing, ten wing, eleven. Sorry, not ten wing. Ten's, ten's a boneyard. Eleven wing is your VOTP. And you got twelve and thirteen, so really there's, thir- there's five wings out of twenty wings. Fifteen wings are full of your fucking kitty fiddlers and your and your protection. So people just this roll, they go, oh, fuck it, fuck it. That's that's their mentality, just putrid mentality. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's they watch too many shows. Cause I, everyone rolling. I think it's uh, pretty gutless if you've decided to to do the <coughs> the crime. Yep. Like to then not be prepared to wear it. Right. <laughs> like, right. I think I think that's what you sign up for, right? Yeah, yeah, well, that's that's exactly right. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I, I counted myself lucky in that I was just a high frequency dealer, so that I and I and I had a second house, so that if I ever got raided, I would never have too much on me yep. at one time because it's just constantly restocking, yes. and so that was the way it went down. So I I got caught and went down for a little bit of time, but. Um, Certainly not as much as, as I could have or probably should have, yeah. um, you know. But the whole time I was do, doing it, I was prepared to wear it like if I ever got yeah, caught. Yeah. 
Um, and I, 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 it was a miracle. I only did four months, right? Well, that, that, that's a good, that's a good result. But the thing is, because because you got bailed and you you showed like how you you went straight into society and you just went fucking mate, you just went fuck that. I'm this is what I'm doing, and you, and you show. Mate, there's no point putting you back in jail mm. if you're showing progress in the community. Like like, how's that going to help yep. you? That's exactly what the judge said yep. when when they when he saw like particularly the the, the stand up comedy thing. He was like, I've never heard that one before. That's right. a new one. He yep. liked that. Uh, he liked that I was doing my um, my uh, alcohol and drug counselling, yep. um, that I'd stuck to all that, um, that, um, yeah, I was just, uh, I, I was I was working a job. Yep. I was do, doing everything I could to, to make it as hard as possible for him to want to send me back to prison. Mm -hmm. And that ended up being the case. I had some re really great character references, all this kind of stuff for him to go, well, there's, no, there's no benefit to society in putting me back in. 100%. Um, I remember when I was... I was going, I was talking to my legal term, like, oh, you reckon I could get like fucking, uh, um, like a drug house or something? <laughs> you reckon they could put me in this like rehab? Like, oh, uh, yeah, like, a, like they could put me into like a drug house where I've got to stay there for 12 months. just fucking went, mate, that's if you get caught with an ounce or so, oh, you idiot. Said, <laughs> you've just been caught with nearly 20 kilos. You're like, fucking, <laughs> mate, you, you idiot. Like, I'm just fucking. Yeah, the same, same thing. <laughs> You know, Same thing happened to me, man. I tried to get <coughs> bail from um, prison to rehab, and they said we don't. They don't accept anyone on large commercial supply right. charges, right? So, and that's way less than yours. Yeah, you were trying yeah, the same yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just hate because at this time too, I didn't realize how much they had on me. Mm. You know, I was like, oh, fuck you must have, every time more information come out, you must have been going, oh, oh, fuck, fuck. <laughs> I am properly fucked. Oh yeah, mate. They, they went back, mate. They went all the way back. So when it came to it. So you ended up getting a whack. So sixteen on top, ten on the bottom. Yeah, so you served ten years, a bunch of different prisons around New South Wales. Um, what what was the toughest point in prison where you just were like at your downest? Well, mate, you know, honestly, mate, like I, I fucking pretty, I accepted it as soon as they got me, and I knew how much they had on me. Mm. Right. So after that first time, I went for bail. And it was only at like the local bail, you know yep. what I mean? I didn't go to Supreme and I knew how much they had. I mean, there's more charges coming. I knew I was fucked. I never went for su Supreme Court bail. Oh, you never went? Nope. Yeah, okay. So what was the point? I knew. And I knew I'm doing time. I was already there. Things were already in place. There's no point getting out when you can just start your sentence right now. I could now. be fucking, I could what, get, get out for two or three years. Now. I could be still in there now. Like, yeah. mm. I, I, and you know what? I was comfortable. Everybody knew me. I knew everybody inside. You know. Mm. So when you go out and you're out for two or three years, then you get go back. It's like you're fucking. Starting all over again. Starting all over again. I was already there. I was comfortable. And I said, fuck, I'm not going for a Supreme Court bar. Mm. I sort of said, I said, I'm not going. I said, man, I'm gone. I said, man, I'm going to be doing a whack. And then my legal team, at the end, the legal team was just shit. They, mate, they just fucking, were, mate, they did nothing. Like, they were proper, proper shit. And um, uh, and I had them for years, and, but they just, they just fucking put their hands up on me and just went, you know, like they just left me posted. But anyway. You think even when you are fucked that there's little things they can do, right? Like they did this, nothing, yeah. mate. They fucking did absolutely nothing. It was, it was just, I was just, I was just there, wow. I bumped into it not long ago. Mm. He goes, oh, you're still pissed off at me. Because, oh, mate, the guy, believe it or not, he was in the same as where, where my tax agent is. Like, he in the in the building in the city. I went, are you fucking kidding? I went, you fucking poosh. You should see you've done nothing. You and the solicitor. Mm. said, he's done fucking nothing. He goes, oh, yeah, but the other cases we had, you, you had a good fighting chance. I said, mate, I know I was fucked on this one. I said, but fucking fight for me. So yeah. that's what you're paid to do, fight for me. Complete dud. I inside. I told everybody. So I fucking because I, mean, I used to bring the guy that much business. Like I pop a bit. Like no, like none of our crew, none of them use him anymore. I told mm. all these other ones in there. Said, "Man, he's dad. He's a complete dad." And the solicitor. Mm. Yeah. So I just you know, I, I mean, like, like. So you ended up pleading guilty in the end. <coughs> yeah. 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 But like we all pled guilty at the same time because if I pled guilty and made everyone else underneath me. Yeah. Guilt, I uh, mean guilty. Yeah, and there was a couple of blokes that, that actually fought, that, that got off because I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, so you were just trying to wait to get all the ducks in a row. Yes, before. you didn't yeah. no one wanted to show their hand and fuck anyone else. Well, the thing is, if, if these guys down here pled guilty and made me guilty, yeah, because they had me as principal. Yeah, so so we all had to uh, we all had to be very very careful. And then when everyone's paperwork, because my paperwork came in first, I knew I was royal fucked. Mm. Fucking mate, I was royally fucked. And then you just had to sit tight and let the other guys figure had out their to, own shit. 
had to, mate. Yeah. You know, and then when they and then all the legal teams, everyone would always talk and get together. And then I remember being at Long Bay and we're there, and I got a phone call and they said, "We're all here at court." And he goes, "They're all fucked. We're pleading guilty today." I said, "Right." And then I spoke to two other barristers, two other legal teams. I said, "Yeah, mate, we're pleading with because I didn't want my legal team because obviously their interest is me. You know, yep. not everybody else. But yeah, you have to be very careful of that." So when they said, no, nah, mate, I was just, well, mate, you should say, I just went, ah, fuck. Because, you know, like you start fighting and then they, you know, it can get ugly and shit, you know, but there's nothing I could do. Mm. So when everyone else pled, they pled guilty, I said, mate, done, yeah. done. So I've relieved, I said, mate, time to get on, get on with it, mate, you know, so. And so you, you had plenty of time, you said, to, to kind of make peace with it. So when, when you were in prison, you just, you, you adjusted your mindset to just, this is, this is me now. Yep. I just need to get through it. Yep. That was, that was it. You know what I mean? Like I just, and like you said, there's obviously things happening on the outside where he's just going, oh my God, like seriously, you know, just one thing and then there was another thing. And just when that thing's over, something else will pop up. You just go, holy shit. Like, and so I, I, I just adjusted, mate. Like I really, really did. Like I just, mate, I, I accept as soon as they got me, man, fuck it, I accepted, I, I accepted my, my peace. Yeah. I mean, this is it. And even when I was in there, mate, I, mate, I was in with a good crew, you know, all of us were on bloody similar charges, you know, a lot of us were doing like from eights to tens to twelve to sixteen, all drug charges and stuff. And like, you know, we had a good crew, like we trained and we like, so it was, we just all, got into a rhythm. Yeah, we got into a rhythm and we all had a positive mindset. All yep. of us were all pretty, pretty much the same, you know. I imagine that would make things a lot easier when you're around uh, a lot of other guys who um, are happy to stick in the same rhythm as you and they're also, like, positive. They yeah. just have accepted. Like, you don't want to be around fucking miserable cunts. Oh, some people come in. And I, that's what I said. I said, didn't you get that criminal brochure, mate? They go, what do you mean? Like, <laughs> mate, you fucking do something wrong. Didn't you get the brochure you read down there in, in fine print? You fuck up. You go, you do something wrong, you go to jail. That's what you just... <laughs> <laughs> and they just go, oh. And now cheer the fuck up. Yeah, because <laughs> people, well, i got 13 months and that. I'm just going, mate. Like, so, so, so for me, I was always very mindful of what I said around certain people. Because there's other guys in there that I knew that were doing 20s. Yep. 20 fucking five. You, yep. you know what I mean? 16, 18s. Like, mate, they're doing, like, double me. Yep. And then, like, this other guy in here was doing 20. I said, when does the reality set in? He goes, you know what, mate? He goes, you're fucking dumb. He goes, you know you're doing your 20. I think you got like 24 on top, 20 on the bottom. I said, um, he goes, you know, you're doing the time. He goes, but you know what? And when it really hits, he goes, when you do 10 years, you know, you got another 10 to go. And he goes, that's when it fuck it. It hit home. He goes, mm. but fuck, it really sinks in. He goes, oh, I've got another 10 of this. Yeah, fuck. You know, so, and that's. And, and you're, and that puts things in perspective for you for when you're just, you do 10 years and then you're done. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, so I, I was, you know, like it's crazy how I mean, there's all these things, there's this, there's, there's levels to it, and this perspective, isn't there? <coughs> I, I, when I first got in the truck, when I re realized I was going from Surrey Hills Police Station to fucking prison, and I was in a truck, and I was sitting there thinking, fuck, I'm, I might be looking at a couple of years here. And the guy that got in the truck, who ended up being my celly in like four different wings, he got in the truck, and he, I was like, what are you in for? And he goes, oh mate, I think I'm going away for fucking fifteen twenty, <laughs> and, and immediately. My fucking, in my head, thinking I'm going to wait for two or three years, fucking felt like not so bad, it's, right? There's someone always worse. There's someone always worse. Be and so immediately I was like, holy shit. Um, yeah. Suddenly the, 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 it didn't seem so scary. It didn't seem so painful. Uh, there's someone always worse. I used to say to the boys, I said, mate, we're in here. We're getting a fucking roof over our food. I said, we're getting fucking free service. What about the fucking, the, the, the breakfast? We get delivered to our doors like we're in a hotel. <laughs> we, we, we always made light, I always made light of things. Mate, look, I said, this is proper fucking yeah, service. Is right. it good on you, chief? I said, just put it on the table, you know. <laughs> like, fucking, I said, this is like the full suit. Fucking knock on the door. You full suit. And the boy, I said, boys, I said, mate, there's guys out there with no fucking home struggling for food. Yep. You know what I mean? I said, mate, you know, I said, there's always someone worse. Even though we're in a shitty place, I said, there's always someone worse. I imagine, like, you would have been popular in there because, I mean, you, you it's great. You want to gravitate towards people that are so positive like that. <laughs> yeah. Even if, even when they're taking a piss, it's still, yeah. like, you know, it's, uh, optimism in a dark place uh, is very, very valued. Yeah. It, it, it is, you know, and like I said, ooh, there was a lot of us that were the same. Mm. Like you, you know what I mean? Like we, we're, we're, we're just, we're just money makers. We're just, we're just money makers. We all had positive attitudes. We all had families, yeah, and stuff like. That. We're not ra running around raping little kids and mm. fucking tampering and, and praying on like little, you know, like just that shit. That that's 
completely frowned that's upon. That's monsters. That's yeah. That's complete monsters. That's right. You know what I mean? And uh, we'd always go, listen, like fucking, and they're, and they're getting their little small wax and shit, and you know, we just we just kept it ourselves and did our things, and we'd have like cook ups and shit. You know what I mean? And we were chipping some food, and had the rice cookers and and cook up. And I, I, see, I I got on with every Nasha. So it was good. So it was Island Day. I'm getting invited to Island Day. It's Chinese <laughs> New Year. I'm, I'm with the Asian boys. Getting, you know, because I, I, I was always kind of like how I am now. You're like calling I, your uncle, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> you know. And I just, it, 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 it was like Kuru, Kuru Day, like Nadok Day, the boys. Every, I, went to, I went to every fucking two that you could boss <laughs> every year. Every year. It is still the United Nations of Mate, prison days. And then, and then when, when the boys fin- finish uh, fasting. Like the, uh, the, my, the Ramadan little boys, boy, Ramadan, yeah. and you know, every every single one of them, I, I went to. You know what I mean? But I never caused any drama. Yep. Never, I, like, don't you mind? I had a heap of fights in there and stuff, but it was never my fucking. It was always towards me. And, and all the boys were just like, you know, like they just, yeah, mate, fucking wait, wait, no, because you're only allowed to invite a certain amount. Like just. No, eight days. There's only a few Aussies that can go and stuff. Yep. So, so, so they call them your trumps. You know, your head, your head goes, yeah, yeah, mate, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Mm. <clears throat> so, put his name down. Trip, yeah, he's coming. You know what I mean? So, I, I was everywhere, mate. You know? <laughs> 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 Do you remember any uh, any funny shit that happened to you when you were locked? You know up? what, mate? I tell you what, mate. There's so much fucking, mate. This is when I had this conversation with a mate of mine. I said, so many, many fucking belly aching laughs that we had that mm. were proper like okay don't get me wrong and i'm not trying to glorify anything you know mm. what i mean but fucking when i had the good crew mate we would fucking laugh like proper it's like you've done a thousand like proper belly aching laughs i mean because you're in the environment you're in the crew it is what it is we've all accepted our fate mate when we're at south like we have the best crew mate we fucking laugh mate and we play practical jokes excuse me on each other mate it, it, it was Fucking, it, like <laughs> I'm telling you, I can't, like I've, I've had like some laughs and that, but I just, like the laughs I had in there were just so genuine. I, I think that's part of the reason why I wanted to do stand-up comedy is because when I was laughing in prison, <coughs> it just, it felt so much more important because of the environment, right? Because when I was laughing, I'd forget where I was. Yeah, right? yeah. And then I was like, wow, this is pretty powerful stuff if it can make me forget that I'm fucking locked up. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I think there was just something about laughing in jail, like laughing in the face of such a like a, a dark environment yep. that made it all the more valuable. <coughs> and then it's funny when you're like that and you, and you and you carry yourself the whole way through. Like there's some screws that just fucking hate it. Eh? Like they're proper, <laughs> they're just haters, man. They're just miserable <laughs> fucks, you know. And like because just, you're in prison and you're not, and oh, you're, you're supposed like, to be laughing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, yeah, you're yeah, supposed yeah. to be miserable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're, you're running around having a, you fucking <laughs> fit as you can be, you know. And then they're just they're going home and part just of it must be thinking, life. Part of them must be saying it, thinking, "Fuck, I wish I could hang out in the yard with the lads," you know. Oh, look, uh, when we're in the, in the bay, right towards the end, where we're doing our um, C three. We had the biggest training camp down there. Like, mm. fucking, mate, like everyone. And we had all done f- fucking five plus years. And we'd all been into the same jail. Also, like, mm. jail upon jail upon jail. So when we get there, there's like fucking 15, 20 of the boys. And then they've got their reunion. mates there. Yeah. And then I've got my, my other mates. So, and ev- so everybody's just there, mate. And, and now I remember a couple of screws, they, um, they actually boxed. And then, mate, and we, so we, we would like, because we had gloves and the pads and shit like yep. that. So we trained that hard. And you can see him going, mm. you can see some of the heads going, like in the office going, fuck, because we're, cause we're like sparring and shit. And she's hitting the pads. So, like, mate, sometimes it would be like, so there'd be like, like 16 of us. Like, so fucking eight boys are holding the pads or someone's skipping. And then, and then what we, we, we would go through two times. You know, and what screws I mean? are stinging for a spa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you see this one, you're dark and a nut. And so, like I said, some of them just treat it as a job. And then some yeah. of them take things really, really personal. Mm. Like, I've always said, you're never going to get a better time to work on yourself in those type of environments. Mm. Completely like, like, mate, it's it's you, mate. You know what I mean. You got a yep. lot of time to fucking think of what you did, what you want to do, like, and like, and to better yourself. Yep. You know, that, and that's that's what it's all about. And so, why do you think uh, you took that opportunity and you're doing something good with it? A lot of guys don't. I mean, wh- wh- why? I'm a lot older too. Like, yeah. I, I, like, you know, I'm fucking nearly fifty two. Mm. You, you know, so I, so, so I just think, I just think, you know, and I. Like I, I, I got a good hobby. I like to surf. See, so I've got a good hobby. Mm. You know, the, p- p- some people don't have nothing to do. I just, yeah, 
I, I sat there and I thought, fuck, like, where did it all go wrong? Um, what did I want to do with my life? And, um, and the answer was stand up comedy. Right. Yep. And, and so I just, as soon as I got out, I started trying to do that. And I also just thought like my family stuck, stuck by me through this. I was like, I can't put them through this ever again. You know, um, like I, I, I need to, to change, um, my path, yeah. but um, I think there's a lot of guys either don't have the that families or support networks. There's so many reasons <coughs> why guys can get out and then soon again well, they're okay. fucking up again. Look, look, I, I totally understand what you're saying, but you got to remember a lot of people fucking burnt their bridges too. So people are just fed up, mate. Like just going, mate, like fucking, mate. I've helped the guy a thousand fucking times. He breaks in my house. You know what junkies are like. Mm. Be, you know what I'm saying? Some people just might get tired. That's why you see people. Sometimes people don't get no visits. Mm. Some people live. A lot further away, so they can't get the visits. You know, and there's a lot of there's a lot of things that you have to take in. You, you know what I mean? Mm. So you just you don't know what goes on in everybody's personal life. Mm. So it has to be you. Yeah, you have to fucking change. Yep. You know, like it's not can't be somebody else asking you to change. You you have to do it. And do you feel? I mean, you have changed, right? And you, you haven't touched oh, drugs, don't nothing. drink. Uh, you're a different sure, version of yourself. Oh, 100 percent. I'm sure there was people that think and up going, "Oh, he's just talking shit." Because mm. I've said, mate, like I said, mate, I said, I'm not doing this. I'm not going back to the ex. I'm not taking drugs. And fucking and, and people are like, Fuck, yeah, 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 mate, look, mate. Everything I've said, I've done. You're stuck to. I've, st- I've stuck to, mate. I, 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 I'm not gonna. Fly, I, I'm not gonna follow them, mate. Like, that's that's me. And, and now you're in a position where you have guys that are struggling themselves with addiction, that kind of stuff, that come to you for, for advice and for support. Last four days. Mm. I get shit te- text on, uh, on Instagram all the time. I reply. Every single person that texts me, I reply back to. I can't believe you replied. I go, mate. Of course I'm going to reply. I'm, like, mate, I'm, I'm, I'm the same as you, mate. I'm, like, I'm, I'm no different. I've been on your. I don't sit here and judge people, mate. Do you? Are you part of any program? Did you NA or anything? Or is it just you? People just come to you because they people know you in, in, in the I go Maroubra help area. Benny Higgs. And I said, I've done, but I haven't done it for a little bit. Like the Rise Foundation. Yep. In Australia, like, like they're talking to kids and stuff like the suicide prevention thing, you know. But everyone, but but in, but in saying that, mate, people just con- con- contact me on Instagram. They might, they might listen to a podcast and go, mate, I can relate to what you said, you know, mm. this and that, you know. I said. Mate, yeah, mate, I always give everyone the, everyone the time of the day. Every single person that texts me. I remember my missus going, mate, you can't. I said, Han, I said, fuck, I might be able to save, but someone might be in a deep place. I said, I might be able to help them. Mm. I said, because if I could do something, I know other people can do it, mate. you just got to be really headstrong with yourself. Just be fucking stubborn. Dude. Sometimes, you know, but I've got the fam, I've got this, okay, mate, you got to work on yourself. So you work on yourself, it's going to fucking filter. It's going to radiate, mate. The family becomes better than misses the kids, you know what I mean? So you've got, you know, sometimes you've got to be stubborn and just work on yourself. Do you feel good about yourself now? I fucking never felt better. Mm. Never never felt better, mate. I just, like, I just, <coughs> everything's must, good. After after what, 10 years in prison and now you've you've spent this, have you been out for what, three and a half years, you said, or about? Uh, yeah, three, three years, four months. Yeah, so, <coughs> and that yeah, time you've, 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 you've yeah. stuck to your word, you've, you've, done all these things to rebuild your life mm. it must be nice to be able to get up and, and like the man you see in the mirror I, I, i've never disliked him yeah but but at the same time is what i was doing was i was numbing him mm. like, yeah. you know so, so you know it's like so i was such a fucking pothead like like i went to amsterdam and like i fucking get all these pounds of pot i fucking pick out all these different pounds for myself and this is much of a pot ever. I could never see myself not smoking pot. Yeah. And then as I got older, I kind of went, fuck, that's not me. But you know what I did was? I swatched, I, I, I swapped the witch for the bitch. So I stopped the pot and I started snoring twi- twice. Of, even though I'd have a line here, the fucking coke gets picked up and the drinking. Mm. So I just went from that to that. And then, then like, I did that for a long time, mate. Just numbing. I just just numbing, mate. Yeah. And I was, I was drained. And in the end, I just... I call it quits on myself mm. and just and I put myself in the rehab and stuff like mm. that. And I just went, I wasted too much time. The fuck, I mean, the boys are getting kegged, they're chasing fucking swells in town, they're doing that, bang. And I'm, and I, mate, I'm fucking paid, I've got kids and that. Now, now it's my turn. Mm. Now, now I'm chasing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm chasing. I'd love that my kids to come along with me and do that, you know? You know fucking, and be, even if I'm up there, you know, they can go and do their thing and that while I'm surfing and shit like that, you know? There's just doors opening, mate. Like, okay, the guy come down, 
four days, five days. Like he, he worked for Universal Studios and stuff, and that's Steve Barr. And like so, so he's doing a book on me now. Yep. So that book's in progress as we speak. It's been it's been in progress for the last couple of months. That's cool. Yep. So there, so there's there's a book there, and then on top of that, it looks so interesting that. So it'll be your life story. Is that yep. book? Yep. Yep. So there's a book there, and then so do you, for that, do you just get interviewed and he go, and he writes? Oh, it was a four or five day interview, mate. We yeah. sat there for fucking mate. So, oh, mate, you know they gave a nap one, <laughs> one day. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, poppy nap. Oh, oh, mate, I was Come just going, oh, mate, because shit, just you know, just go and 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 then everything's fucking like it's recorded and they've got like a bit of film on. You know what I mean? Mm. And then everything seemed so intriguing. Then he went home and that. Then he because he was, you know, like. He knows quite a few people. He's going, mate, hold on here. He goes, mate, there could be a fucking miniseries here. And I went, up. Oh, well, I went, really? Mm. He went, yeah. So I, I, I touched base with a, a couple of people and they said, mate, give us a book if there's something there, mate. We're all for this shit, you know what I mean? Because it's like my lifestyle was kind of like point break. I wasn't robbing banks, but I was just bringing in coke and, and chasing waves, like point break. And, and like, for so long, you know. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so point so break, long. yeah, they robbed banks and, 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 and chased Chase the waves. Chase the endless summer, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, that, yeah. and that's that, that's exactly what I was doing. That's exactly what I was doing. And that's what they said. It's like a little jacked up version of, 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 of uh, point break, you know. And I was like, so I reached out and they said, mate, wow. Look, look, the book is de- is definitely like on its way. That's all gone. But if the series comes, whatever, like I'm, I don't hold anything you know it might not be it might not be anything really there but at the same time is there may be there and the, i mean these these are the kind of the the nice to haves right they're just like a, extra things but the, the the bigger thing is just um your day-to-day life is is a life that you enjoy oh, right? i love it oh yeah you know my a, biggest hangover now is, is the sugar <laughs> I have a little treat, mate. At eight o'clock at night, I'm fucked. What man. are you having? Oh, mate. Oh, the other day, I had like fucking eight honeycombs. Like those little, the little ones? Yeah. No, uh, Violet Crumble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Violet Crumble, mate. I yeah. just, I had one. Mate, you know, I ate eight. When I woke up, mate, I, I scalded a little water before I went to bed. So I had to f- try to flush the sugar. So I pissed three and I woke up. Mate, my head was pounding. It was a fucking all the sugar went off. <laughs> you just reminded me, you know, the, the, um, on the, uh, prison buy ups, the, the chalk honeycomb <coughs> that used to be, I used to be able to get on buy up. I thought they were better than the ones you can get yeah. like at the supermarket. <laughs> and they were good value as well. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. You know, you know what they rob you with is the, 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 the chili tuna. Yeah. You know oh, I mean? man. $5 for those Fuck. Serena tuna Ch- cans. Mate, I'll go to Audi. They're yeah. exactly the same for $1.89. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 like, yeah I, fuck, I, still, I still only have a can of tuna a day. Yeah. I, but I, I ate it before I went to jail. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I love them, but mm. then five dollars. It was just too expensive. Like I could only buy one a week. Just uh, and no, the guys, right. guys would use it as currency. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's it's funny, you know what I mean. Like, if you're high flying, mate, you're getting ten. You know, yeah. mate, you're rolling hard. <laughs> you know, you know. Like your shoes. You, might. The, you know, if you got good shoes, I know that you can't wear any shoes. But before we 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 we, had, we could wear all that shoes, mate. We're rolling around new Nikes and shit. Yeah, well. Boys, you He's going all right. He's got the fuck. Yeah, he's got twenty fifty barrel all night. Prison like, flex, right? Yeah, there. it is straight up, isn't it? It is. It is though. It's funny that it is. You good clothes? Like we got fucking Nike clothes, naughty car and shit. You know. That's. I think you said that before we started recording. Was just like guys after doing plenty of years in prison, they can get uh, plenty of kit, right? They've, they've, yeah. they've got plenty of gear. That I, I I saw that even in remand, guys. So obviously had been pinched. Or handed themselves in the police station wearing green <coughs> stuff that they knew they could just be taken straight into prison with. Yeah. And it looked good. Yeah. So you're like, there are guys that get good at jail. Yes. You know, like it's almost, it's a skill, right? Yep. They get good at, and I was like, fuck, that guy looks good for prison. Like, yeah, you're right. yeah, 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 yeah. Get it out. I'm yeah. here in my uh, fucking. Uh, uh, uh. Mate, it's, it's funny because uh, this, this Asian bloke, he's a top, I won't mention his name, he's a good, he's a good boy. And uh, he's, he's hard, <laughs> hard fucking, no, he's a big bloke, yeah? long hair and that. He goes, he goes, the best looking prisoner ever saw him, Wayne. That's what he's just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he said to me. Because I, I had my hair, like, a, like you know, proper. I had the Levo boys doing it, and I was going out for visits. Had me good gear. He goes, mate, the best looking. And then, and Jeez, then. you look good, mate. And it was, he was that funny. So, anyway, so, so, so he goes out and he goes to a party, right? Mm. And then he he, he he bumps into my little brother, mate. He goes, well, mate, this is fucking my nose, brother. He goes, mate, best looking prisoner ever seen, mate. <laughs> so he said to me, little brother, he, he just started, then my brother come and told me, mate, he's the best. I just laughed, you know what I mean? Oh, man, so, I would have been in tears. If oh, you, I was fucking, you know. You know exactly who he's talking about. He, oh, I saw this guy at a party. He came up to me. He said, best looking brother. Yeah, yeah, straight away, straight away. Because he used to say it to me all the time, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He's a good bloke. Amazing. Um, cool. <laughs> we've had a bit of a saga here. We've we've we've, yeah. we've gone well. Um, I think um, I think that's probably about it. Um, 
Is there anything else you wanted to cover off? Um, no. Nah. No. Nah. Mate, just when you go to jail, don't pull blokes off with your ass cheeks. Big tip, <laughs> eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I just, I mean, what are you doing? I just pulling blokes off with my ass cheek in the showers, mate. <laughs> Took you a while to learn that one. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me now, mum. You'd be proud of me. I have fucking no hands. <laughs> uh, Wayne, well, uh, well, thank you for coming on, mate. Uh, and thank you for sharing your story. Um, it's been great. And, uh, yeah, look forward to... Uh, what, do you know, have a name for the book when it comes out? Yeah. Oh, we don't. We've, there's a couple of names tossed up. We're not. We, we, we haven't confirmed. It yet. No, we haven't really yeah. confirmed the name. Yeah. We, have, we, we haven't confirmed the name yet. You know. All right. Names. Well, look out for the <coughs> Wayne Cleveland book and the Wayne Cleveland mini series potentially one day as well. Yeah, imagine that, eh? Jesus Christ! I wonder if they use. Will they use my melon on TV? You reckon? Ah, well, we're going to go ahead for radio, <laughs> but I don't know about the TV. <laughs> well, one of the best looking guys in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be able to make <laughs> even a cameo in your own, yeah, in your well, own series, surely. Well, even what, what were they calling the people in the background? Were they called um, the extras? The extra, yeah. I could fucking just be walking, you know what I mean? Who are they, who are they going to get to play the cops? Are they going to get fucking. They're going to have to get the, the Aussie version of Keanu in for the. Yeah, well, no, 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 I know anyone that I know, that they won't be playing coppers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck that. No. Yeah, fuck it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Got to get some fucking stiff, though, even, but yeah. Even acting it, no way, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, 100%. The boys are like, fuck that. Man, if you've got a role, like, you, you, you got to stay, you got to play a call, well, fuck, you'd be handing the role back. Fuck off. <laughs> Wayne, thanks for coming on. Hey, Mike, champion. Been, been another Thank episode you. of Shit's Gone Sideways. Shit's Gone Sideways. 